start the stream, see when it jumps over here. So Lola, go over there. I'm going to let you know when um, the stream looks like it's starting up. Okay. Is it doing something? I don't know. I have no clue <laughs> of whether or not it's doing something. It looks like it is doing something and broadcasting. So, you know, we uh, we're live. I'm going to throw this up there so, so all the people see. There it goes, live from the Big Daddy Gun Studio. It's, it's your boy, Hank Strange, back in the building. We're doing this. We're, we're, we're trying a little experimentation here, running an actual in-studio going on, and I'm going to split the screen so you guys can see. That guy over there checking out his phone right now. Mm. Angry American. Can't let everybody know, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're live. We're live. Angry American. Right? Chris Weatherman. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. In person. And, you know, definitely there's some there's some chewing tobacco going on. There's going to be. Yeah, I know it's book. bad. Hold up the book for a second so the folks out there can see the book. There you go. Okay. Home Invasion. Yeah. So the one we, that came out in slightly larger format. So yeah. Now. But, uh, yeah. Okay. You're getting prolific, man. Working on it. You know, I mean, you're going to be kicking J.K. Rowling's ass here. <laughs> <laughs> if I could just have J.K. Rowling money, I'll be happy. <laughs> Dude, then it's on. <laughs> we'll all it will be happy. Be. <laughs> it will be then. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good conversation here. I'm just gonna let it roll and all you know, and jump right into it. So Lola, how's it looking? Are we are we on the air? Is this coming out? It's looking, but it's not splitting Chris when he talks. Oh, no, no, no. I've got to manually control everything. It's not working like that. That's why I just went to a split screen so they can see us both right now. Okay. As you can tell, we've never done this. So it is right. working. It's I don't good. know if you can see me or not, but I'm yeah. going to keep talking. <laughs> yeah, just, I'm not seeing you both, though. Yeah. I'm only seeing you. Oh, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Boom. How about that right now? Should be. We should be both up there right now. Okay, so should be both of us. Okay, so throw up the book. Let's... uh. Let's uh, let's do this, Chris. Let's throw up the book again. Okay, so tell us about what's going on with Home Invasion. Home Invasion is just book eight. It's uh, from what I've been told, everybody really enjoys the ending of this one. You guys will probably like it. That's what I'm uh oh. Told. Uh oh. If you know me, you know what to expect. Yeah, but, I have yeah, heard that. This is yeah. This is just continuing the story. You know, Morgan's world's evolving, and he's just gonna adapt. You know, you gotta roll the punches. There is no second chances in this. So whatever happens with them, happens with them. And it's not always a happy world. You know, bad stuff happens to good people. You're scaring me, man. I mean, I haven't gotten all the way through this series yet. So I'm on book four. And then oh, I yeah. took a break to go over to Cry Havoc. You know, I'm almost done with yep. Cry Havoc. I, I'm on, like, I listen to your stuff on audiobook. <laughs> I love audiobook because Duke yeah. Fontaine's the man. I mean, people he, love Duke he Fontaine. Is. He's so. really good, man. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's like one of the best guys out there reading audiobooks. I keep telling him one of these days I'm going to reveal his true identity. Okay. Yeah, I've been sworn to secrecy, yeah. but one of these days I'm going to do it. Oh yeah, just uh, okay. So we got to If you look on the bottom of it, there's a volume, little volume thing should be on the bottom of Chris's. Yeah, is he a little low, a little low? Yeah, turn up the game. Turn up the game. Yeah, just a little. Yeah, there you go. Are we better now? Does that sound better yeah. for everybody? Actually, Lola's gonna go check. Yeah. So you guys, you know, you're gonna have to help us. Bear out. with us for a moment. <laughs> yeah, let us know. If Does it sound better, Lola? Can you hear me now? I can, can you hear see. me now? It looks like good. your sound's bouncing good from over here. Okay. From what I can see. I also don't talk terribly loud. I kind of mumble a little bit. You do. <laughs> <laughs> Got a mouthful of worm yeah. dirt. Yeah, so we're talking about we're talking about. We got Lola's approval. Let's go. Yeah, awesome. We were talking about Duke Fontaine, who reads the audio books. I highly recommend folks listen to the audio. I mean, I'm not against reading. I used to do a lot of reading. Oh no, I, I mean, I recommend to buy the book, you know, mm -hmm. and then buy the audio book. Yeah. And since you bought those two, just go ahead and buy the ebook too. Yeah. That's and my right. Yeah, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a, you know, trifecta. But no, the, the audio books are awesome. Uh, Duke does a good job. He, he was um, in the pool for selection choices for me when I was with Penguin. Um, and I liked him, and oddly enough, that was the guy they wanted to. Mm -hmm. So it was a perfect match. We we all settled on him. And when I left Penguin, uh, the publisher I went with for audiobooks, I told them I'd only sign with them if they managed to get Duke to sign as well. Okay. That was the only way I'd go. Oh. Okay. Um, and so we did a preliminary contract that had a 10-day expiration on it, they had 10 days to get Duke, and if they didn't, then our contract was void. Um, uh -huh. They called me on the third day, said it's all done. He's under contract. We're good to go. Yeah. And so now Podium Publishing does my e-book, my audio books, and they do a great job. And 
Duke's still reading them. That's huge with audiobooks. I'm, I'm, yes. you know, I'm a big fan of audiobooks nowadays. I'm an older dude, and I'm driving around. It's great, especially on road trips yeah. to listen to. And who reads it makes a huge difference. Well, and switching the narrator up, too. I mean, you know, he was in for five books, and to go switching the narrator up that yeah. deep end would have just wrecked it. Yeah. You know, and, and the fans liked the guy. They really did. And, and for their enjoyment, I wanted to be the same dude, not, yeah. not go trying to. You ever thought about doing it yourself? No. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear this. Yeah, you, you can't, can't do different, different voices. Yeah, no. no, not me. <laughs> I bet you're pretty good with doing different voices. No problem. I can barely type, let alone read. You know, I, yeah. I can write reading, but I can't read writing. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to wrap my head around that. <laughs> so okay, so tell us. Uh, I want to get like. Um, I mean, the the big thing that's coming out is book eight. Yeah, book eight's out. A lot of people have been reading that. I'm working on book nine. Book nine. Um, you know, I'm also working on a spinoff, and in, uh, in the books, Morgan talks to a guy on ham radio out in Wyoming. Yeah. So I'm working on his story now. Okay. So All the way back like, to day like, one. Oh, cool. So we're going to be back with those guys from day one. From where they start when the EMP hits. So let's let's explain that for folks out there who've never heard of this series of books. Well, the, the all right. So the series is uh, a. Oh, what's up? Second, Chris, hang on one second. What? You have an, an echo. In your audio, I, do. So I don't know if it's that you're too loud. Oh, okay. Chris is coming in real good, and you have. Okay. A We're modifying things. And you have yeah. a. Slide. Please stand by. Yeah, because you it's turned, you turned, you probably echo. turned it up too much. That's why gonna, you're going, you're going up too much. I'm gonna Chris back down to where yeah. he was. And I'll get a little closer to it too. Yeah. Yeah, and then Chris got a little bit closer to it too. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Let me. Um, yeah. Let me. I'll, I mean, you know. So. Uh, yeah. So this. So it's a. Uh, it's an EMP based series and mm-hmm. the the main character morgan carter is just a he's an average guy he's he's no special forces ninja no special training but he is a prepper you know mm-hmm. so he's 250 miles from home when it happens and he's got to get home that's yeah. going home that's how it all started right. i didn't know i was writing a book series at the time so the titles of all st- I stuck with the home thing just because i kind of thought that was cool after i did the first one but the first book's about him trying to walk home across florida for 250 miles yeah so that's the cool thing. I know it's very popular in Florida. It's very popular Florida. everywhere. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a Florida story. Yeah. But I think a lot of people out there just... I, I was telling you this off air, you know, when we went to uh, get lunch. It's really scary. Now, I, I listen to a lot of fantasy stuff and a bunch of other things, but it's really scary, I think, because it's so real. It's so plausible that the what, what happens in these books can actually happen. It could actually happen... And that's, when I wrote it, I was kind of doing a war game what if. And everybody's like, eh, EMP can't happen. Well, North Korea just tested an ICBM. It's been been mm-hmm. confirmed it was an ICBM. Mm-hmm. They, they made a statement yesterday saying that their nuclear arsenal will be used for blackmail. Mm-hmm. That's so what I mean. they're going to try to blackmail the world with their What nukes. else can they do? Yeah. yeah. So that makes the possibility even more realistic. Then when you right. consider the two... The two um, North Korean satellites that are orbiting that cross the U.S. every day mm-hmm. that have never transmitted a signal since the day they were launched, <laughs> that's a little worrisome, too. So if they're not transmitting, are they waiting to receive a signal? Mm-hmm. We don't know what they are. Don't know. Mm-hmm. The last piece of the EMP puzzle is the fact that Russia's nuclear doctrine is EMP first strike followed up by a nuclear strike. Okay. So these things could happen. And... Everybody says Cold War is Cold War is over. That's not a possibility. It's a very real possibility. We our government. We have elements in our government that are dead set on starting a war with Russia. Mm-hmm. If Hillary Clinton, Clinton would have been elected, we'd be at war with Russia now, probably, because she mm-hmm. was one of the hawks leading that charge. Right. Um, and that's kind of what uh, Cry Havoc is about a little bit, just to allude to that. Sort of, yeah. Sort of. Sorta. It's um, the alternate, the alternate universe where Hillary got elected. Now, I'm sure when you wrote it, you thought. Well, it's not was Hillary gets like, elected in there. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> it was. It was um, originally, but I backed all that out. Oh, you did. Okay. I backed it out because. Okay. Um, yeah, when so you when you do something like that, and then she doesn't get elected, old lady your book don't get sold. Her, her husband's uh, president. Uh, but um, but for those that don't know, EMP, you right. know, electromagnetic pulse. It's yeah. it's a um, tuned nuclear device detonated about two hundred miles up, mm-hmm. and um, it could, this could happen naturally and unnaturally, right? Well, there's or, CME, there's CME, okay. which is slightly different. 
coronal mass ejection, which is from the sun, you know, blowing plasma out in space, mm-hmm. which happens regularly. We get um, solar flares, a lot of people call them. And that happened in the 1800s called the Carrington event, which caused a lot of trouble back then with telegraph. If it would have happened today, it would wreck society mm-hmm. on whichever side of the earth was facing the sun at the time. Mm-hmm. But it would destroy society. Mm-hmm. The, the, something Carrington level event would. Because, I mean, it burned telegraph offices down in the 1800s. Mm-hmm. Imagine the structures wow. that would burn today. Okay. So, yeah. A lot more wire. So, it would do more than just knocking out everything uh, mm-hmm. that has circuitry and all that. It, would it actually probably wouldn't bother. Something like a CME probably wouldn't bother that much circuitry mm-hmm. as far as like your phone. Your phone would probably work, but the cell towers would be gone. The power grid would be toast. Um, I mean, the power line, the in the Carrington event, the telegraph wires, the copper telegraph wires, heated up so much they sagged and actually hit the ground. They also carried so much current into the telegraph offices that a lot of them caught on fire and burned from the charge coming in. Wow. So imagine the power grid today, you know, think of it as a big antenna, Mm -hmm. just collecting all that that current. Because that's what it is. It's not voltage it's collecting. It's collecting current. And that current passing through the power grid, it'd heat the conductors up. Our conductors would do the same thing. They'd heat up and melt, Mm -hmm. um, sag to the ground. People could become electrocuted from that. And just the an amazing number of fires that would start from something like that happening. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think one of the things that people want to know is uh, your what's your writing style, but I'll also like to know how did you start putting all this info in your head because you definitely don't look like a dude that would have all this info in his head. I'm not trying to do Oh, no. Um, but, you know, well, I, I've studied. I've, I've, I was a prepper before prepper was a term. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been doing this for... Oh, about 20 years probably. And I used to study a lot of primitive stuff. I got into what's now called bushcraft back before it was called bushcraft. Primitive skills. I studied those for a long time. And I've just evolved through the years. You know, I I embrace all aspects of survival. Everything from primitive skills, starting fire with two sticks, to um, the most modern stuff we can get our hands on. What did you do before this? Did that have something to do with you getting into this or was it just totally unrelated? Well, no, I, well, I'm, an, I'm an industrial electrician by trade. Um, okay. So I worked on power plants, power generation. I worked for power companies. Um, so so you, despite everything I say, you are a smart guy. The, the, contrary to popular belief, yeah. uh, there is some evidence to it. But, um, yeah, I, I worked for power companies. Um, I've worked all over the country building everything you can imagine, industrial-wise. Um, and commercial many, many years ago. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I've also worked in jails, um, networking, IT, CCTV, surveillance stuff, okay. biometrics, you name it, I've, I've yeah. worked in it. Okay. So. so you were a nerd. Yeah. You yeah. know, you were a nerd, a little bit of an egghead before this, and then you got into the, the prepping thing. Well, I was into that too. That was They were running hand in hand. Mm-hmm. So they were running hand in hand, and it just opened me up to the more modern aspects of it. Like, you know, I, I study and learn ways to preserve food primitively, mm-hmm. but I have a freeze dry machine in my kitchen. Mm-hmm. So I freeze dry and store my own food. Right. You know, um, I've looked at alternatives for power uh, and I've built a big solar power station at my house, mm-hmm. portable one that I can move. Um, so yeah, it, it just opened me up to the possibilities of what you can do, you know, combining different elements to, right. to achieve the result. And it seems to me like you're coming at this from both directions. So you've got technology oh, if yeah. you need that, but it seems like if you, you want to be prepared, if you didn't have any of these things, you could still build it back up? Is that right? Right. And in the, in the survivalism prepper world, there's a lot of people that say, well, I'm not going to have that because if an EMP happens, it won't work. Well, what if an EMP doesn't happen? Mm-hmm. You know, are you gonna are you gonna stop driving your car because an e, if an EMP happens, it may not work? Are you gonna you know get mm-hmm. you a horse and buggy or ride a bicycle? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna take advantage of everything I can as long as it will work. And when it stops working, I'll move to Plan B mm-hmm. or C or D mm-hmm. or E, whatever. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think the biggest thing I always try to tell people is the first thing in any apocalypse or shit hit the fan situation or whatever. The number one to me, this is my thing. You can tell me if you have a different thing. You have to survive first. Yeah, well, and that's why... You know, I mean, you have to actually be alive and be there and, and have your limbs useful and all that kind of stuff and then take it from there because who knows where you're going to be? That's the whole premise. You know, that's the whole premise of the books. You never know where, yeah. where you're going to be when it happens. Mm-hmm. And that's why I prefer the term survivalist to prepper because mm-hmm. 
the term survivalist means I intend to survive. Okay. Prepping means I'm preparing for it, mm-hmm. but I'm not giving any kind of indication of the outcome. I plan on living through it mm-hmm. best I can, and I could die in the first instant, and mm-hmm. none of this matter. But I'm going to give myself and my family every opportunity that I can. Yeah, and then whatever you have, so even if you're prepared, you have all these things. None of those things are going to last forever necessarily. No, they're not. Right, and and if you you may start out, and this is all in the books. For folks who are interested, you may start out in location, like, uh, you know, uh, what is it, sheltering in place, so to speak, and then you may yeah, have to move from Yeah, I mean, I'm not a fan of sheltering in place. You know, you mm-hmm. hear that for the mass shooter stuff, and to me, all that does, all that is is a collection of potential victims. Mm-hmm. I teach my girls, too, that when they're in school, if there's a mass shoot, if there's a shooting incident in your school, and they tell you to hide in the corners and lock the doors. I've mm-hmm. told them to throw a desk through a window or yeah. a fire extinguisher and get the hell out of the building. Yeah. I don't yeah. care what the teacher tells you to do. Yeah. Sheltering in places, it's asinine. It's just, let's pile the victims up and wait yeah. for the crime to occur. That's true because even if you barricade yourself in there, then that guy can just decide to burn down everything. Exactly. You, yeah. you, you never know. The possibilities are, are endless. But um, I, I, I am a proponent of proactive survival. Okay doing something to to achieve the desired outcome which is staying alive Mm -hmm. so how now we were we were kind of going in that direction before how did you wind up writing these books exactly like how did you i think you said you were on forums yeah i was i was on a forum one one website in particular which shall not be named because uh he didn't want to answer my emails (laughs) Oh. <laughs> well, Uh-oh. well, I wrote I wrote going home on a forum. A lot of people know what forum it is, and it was a mm-hmm. great forum, and I'm still a member of it. Mm-hmm. And I was just doing it for my own entertainment, and didn't know I was writing a book. But it had like two million views before it was done, wow. and people begging me to publish it, which I resisted for a long time. So it, it kind of went like viral on a forum. Oh, I mean, it did it was big on a time. Forum, two million views. Yeah, it was the most viewed thing on the entire forum. And the forum had at that time had over fifty thousand members. How long ago was this? Six years. Wow. Six okay. years ago. And so when I finally did publish it, I tried to contact the forum owner and say, hey, I want to do some advertising. I want to buy some banner ads and stuff. The guy wouldn't answer my emails. So I wow. kind of okay. took it away. Yeah. You know? yeah. But that's where it all started. I mean, I wanted to work with the guy, and he just wouldn't even reply to me. Okay. I was the most viewed um, person on his website, mm-hmm. and he wouldn't even... Wow. Take the time to talk. So is that because even now I've noticed nowadays you're not on a lot of social media. I mean, well, I've got Facebook, yeah. Twitter, and Instagram. Um, but and people tell me all the time I should do more. Oh, you should do more. You should do more. My take on that is if I've got something to say, I'll say it. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to just continually post stuff to try to stay in front of people's eyes. Mm-hmm. If they want to know what I'm doing, they're going to follow me. I don't collect email addresses. I don't pester people with newsletters. I don't do none of that. If folks want to know what I'm up to, they can follow me. And when I've got something to say, they'll still see it. I don't want to waste their time. And I don't want to just try to come up with stuff to post. I don't want to. I see people that post every day. And I know some of it's algorithm driven and it's machines doing it. And to me, that's just annoying. You know, mm-hmm. um, if I've got something of value to say, I'll say it. Yeah, and, and you're not overly seeking the limelight. Also. Oh no, no, I'm no, I'm just a, a hick from Florida that writes some books, man. Right. You know, right. so so how do you write these books? How do you go about? Obviously, you said the first one you're on the forum. Second one too, actually, I wrote on the same forum. You just wrote it on the forum. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. So how did you wind up? Because you're actually, did you self-publish or are you? Going home was self-published originally. Um, okay. Not through the way we self-publish today. That's that's so easy. I paid a company. Back then it was called a Vanity Press. And um, they made it a book. I paid way too much money. I self-publish now for a fraction of what I paid for that book. And um, But they made it a book and it got listed on Amazon. And when it got there, it got my attention. I thought there was something to it. Okay. Um, and so I, it got on Amazon. It got my attention. It also caught Penguin Books' attention. They called, made me an offer, um, which I turned down the first time, which shocked them. Um, their actual words to me were, if we made this offer to any other author, they'd wet themselves. Wow, and I'm like, okay. well, call one of them. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm not interested in seeing your name on my book. I don't really care at this point. Mm-hmm. I said, it's making money on Amazon. I'm making more than you're offering me for the book. I make more there. So they came back with one of those Godfather offers. 
<laughs> and I was like, yeah, offer you came with you. And I was like, wait, how do we go from here to way the hell up here? I'm like, the entertainment business. I mean, I know you may not think you're in the entertainment business, but there's a lot of gangsters in the entertainment business. Well, they, even in YouTube, it's, it's like they said too. It was you know unknown genre to them at the time, and it was a gamble. And but it wasn't a gamble, as as we've now proven. This this, and I told that to the guy that um, I was doing the the first book with. I said this. This isn't a gamble. This is mm-hmm. this thing's gonna go. It's gonna. I mm-hmm. mean, I mean, now it's turned into a bunch of books. So I don't know if I could. We yeah. got all these. You know. I just I just did some numbers the other day. I ran some numbers of what I can actually see sales numbers wise. Right. And I've sold over half a million copies now. Wow. Okay. Which, if I mean, you're this is just just to show you guys yeah. on if, my thing. There's hope, which um, that's just, like you you co-wrote that one, mm-hmm. right? Okay. That's not in the going home. Well, yes. it's actually set in the going home world. It is, okay. but it's not part of the series. Okay, I haven't read that one yet. So now, here's the thing. That here's something I want to get into before we get into questions. And if, if if you guys have questions out there, definitely let us know. Lola will share some of those with us. Um, what's this series? Is it the going home series or the survivalist <laughs> series? Well, Penguin hung the survivalist series on it. Um, okay. I wasn't happy with that because there's an old, long-standing series out there called the Survival Series, and I didn't want to step on that guy's toes. But they hung it on there, so to me, it's the Going Home series. Okay, but it's the Survival Series as well. Yeah, because when I yeah. when I look it up, I see both the Survival Series. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in some places, I don't know if it's Amazon. I'm trying to remember. You see that, so okay, and that's even on the front of book eight right here. It says the Survival Series because that's what it got called. When right. Penguin p- picked it up, and so I've just stuck with it. Okay, because so I have you know one of those works. Yeah, and you know, and Penguin did a lot of good stuff for me, and so I'm not trying to do anything negative to them. I stuck mm-hmm. with the Survival Series, and I still call it that. But to the people that were there back when I was writing it online, and they were reading it a post mm-hmm. at a time, every, you know, every day, every other day, it was just the Going Home series, and so okay. I, either one works for me. So. Okay. Yeah. So now you did. Um, so these are the only like so it's the Going Home series. And then obviously you did um, the Hope. Hope, and, and then there's you, there's two other books too. Right. There's one called Charlie's Requiem, okay. which is set in the Going Home world. I co-wrote with a friend of mine, Walt Browning. And then there's um, Charlie's Requiem, Democide. Okay. Um, Charlie's Requiem is just a novella, not very big. And Democide is a full novel. Okay. And those are both in print, ebook, audio, the mm-hmm. full nine yards. And then the only other thing that's out there is a novella that I wrote. Amazon asked me to write it for them. And it's called Ramblin' Man. Okay. And it's set in the world of the Jakarta pandemic by Stephen Conkley. Oh, okay. And um, and that one's that one was a lot of fun to write because the main character um, is just a raging alcoholic. Mm-hmm. He's not a prepper. He's not a survivalist. He's just an alcoholic always looking for a drink. Okay. And, and um, he survives. And in the opening scene, he survives because he's in jail when oh, things happen. Okay. He's that dude. He's that uh, and you know, and, and they just dumped him out of the jail because he was just arrested for drunk. Okay. And they're like, you got to go. He's like, where? They're like, we don't care. Just out of yeah. here. You know, and so he finds himself afoot, you know, in the middle of wow. Iowa. Wow. And it just follows his story. And aren't there guys like that? I know I've known some guys like this that could be alcoholics, drug addicts, to like have sex with with anyone. You know? Well, the main Still character, live. the main character in that book is inspired by somebody I know in real life. Okay. And he's Amazing. that guy. Really? I mean, he should have like 18 DUIs. Wow, as okay. he's that been stopped and always got let go, wrecked cars yeah. and had to be standing outside of it when the cops yeah. show up. It's, it's weird cuz he's just me, that guy. Yeah, I would do one thing crazy like that and, and be in out. jail. Yeah. 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 In prison. You know. Right. So, isn't Cry? Ha- Where's Cry Havoc in here? Did we discuss? And that? Cry Havoc is yeah. We mentioned it earlier, but Cry Havoc is another storyline that's not even related to going home. It's something entirely different. It deals more with a financial issue. So, like a bank mm-hmm. holiday, what happens when the credit cards and debit cards and EBT cards and all that mm-hmm. stuff stop working, mm-hmm. and how society would kind of spiral, and mm-hmm. the government's response to that, which I used. I modeled the, our government's response off the response in other countries, how they've dealt with it, mm-hmm. and what could possibly happen. So, mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So, um, you know, I'd like to know about the characters here. How do you come up with these characters in, in the Going Home series based on real people? Is, is the main character based on you? I mean, yeah, well, it, it it kind of, I mean, yeah. You've got the same kind of family Well, I was, I was, like I said, I was wargaming it. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, but Morgan does a bunch of crap I probably wouldn't do. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, but you know, it's fiction at this point. 
I'm writing the story to, through the, the character's eyes, not really through my eyes now. They've been developed to this point. People always ask me about that, and I say, I just follow them along and write down what they're doing in my head. I Literally, I don't outline a book. I don't make many notes. I have, in my head, I have a couple of major ideas. I want this to happen, this to happen, that to happen. But what happens in between how and when we get there and what order even those things will happen, I don't necessarily oh, really? know. Yeah. Okay, so you don't do a whole complicated I flow chart? I sit down and know. just start writing it. Okay, do you have like the last page? Like, are there any secrets like that? Like you have the last page and you write towards that? Or well, you have books with... I always, it's funny when I start one, almost always I have the last line in mind or the last paragraph. Okay. And if I don't, I will have it before I'm done. And I just have to get to that point. And again, I don't know how or when I'll get to that point. Mm -hmm. But when I do, and that that piece just falls into place, and it's like, all right, this one's done. That's time mm -hmm. for the next one. So. Okay. Do you lock yourself up somewhere? Do you no. travel, or you just you're just home? Yeah, I, I work from home a lot. Um, I like being at home, and I like working from home, and um, and I write, you know, almost every day. Sometimes there's spurts where I won't. I'll go for a week. I won't write nothing. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just sit down. I'll read back through like the last page maybe of what I wrote. Oh, okay. And then I'll just jump right back into it and follow up again. I mean, if you've gone to this is the eighth book in six years, I mean, that's pretty It's actually good. the twelfth book in six years. Yeah, but in the series. In the series, in the series yeah. it's the eighth book. So you're not like, uh, you know, what is it, George R. R. Martin where people. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, those, those are huge, massive, yeah. ridiculous books. But. Yeah. You know, you, do you have people hounding you, pestering you? Like oh, there's, yeah, people? it's awesome that there's always people wanting to know when the next one's going to be out and, mm -hmm. you know, to get the feedback that mm -hmm. that so many people enjoy it. Uh, to me, it's amazing that, that so many people follow these characters and are invested in them, too. I hear that a lot, that, mm -hmm. that how invested people are in the characters. And so that says a lot about the characters in the book. You know? Yeah, I think so, too. Now, one of my characters, I don't want to get off the character, is Thad. He's cool as hell. Yeah, where does Thad come from? Obviously, you didn't know me back when you started doing this. <laughs> well, Thad, the, it's weird the way Thad ended up in the books. Um, when I was writing on the forum, I had a guy send me a private message one night. And he's like, hey, man, I love the story. It's awesome. He's like, and I love, he goes, and I want to tell you first, I'm a black guy. Mm -hmm. And I love what Morgan did with those guys at the mm -hmm. store. Yeah, because I'd have done the same thing. We, yes, when I when I listened to it, I was like, I would have done it faster. But you know, it's not. Well, in, the, in this yeah. book, it actually happens a little slower than it did mm -hmm. in the original book because mm -hmm. Penguin made me. Oh, slow down. Modify it a yeah. slight okay. touch. Right. Um, if you had the original books, it's slightly different. And they wanted me to change it even further, and I just refused. Yeah, because it seems like there were a bunch of things he went through. I'm not, you know, I'm not in, in a situation like this. That's Second place really is the first sure, loser. You yeah, know? we need to make sure we have decorum and don't even get into certain things. That's no. for all of us. That goes for any, you know, either no. side that you're there, on. And you know, and if you understand OODA loop and stuff, you know, you've got to be in front. You can't, mm -hmm. you can't be one step behind. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this guy sent me a message, and uh, he's like, I don't, you know, I'm a black guy. He goes, I, I agree with what happened. He's like, but do me a favor and put a black prepper in the books. Mm -hmm. He goes, because people don't think black people prep. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. That I mean, was, that's, and that's true. And that's how it happened. That's right. why when Morgan's walking down the road, he sees Thad camp on the side of the road. That's where it came from. Mm -hmm. And and Thad has turned into be one of my favorite characters to write. Yeah. I love writing the parts for him. He's yeah. such a good guy. Yeah. You know, just he's a good soul. And he's had such bad stuff happen to him. Yeah, I yeah. mean, and, and the character comes across very, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, I mean, it, it really hits you, the character. You really yeah. feel it, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know. And what cracks me up is I've had reviewers on Amazon call it racist, too. It really? just boggles, yeah, boggles my mind. Yeah. And I mean, I'm I, like, how can you say that one of the primary characters of the story is a black guy who's portrayed positively? Mm-hmm. And why, it's why would racist. That be, yeah, well, you know, I don't know why that would be racist. I mean, he's a guy in the country, right? Yeah, he's a. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 when my dad, when I was growing up, he was a heavy equipment operator, and I've worked with, uh, with my dad, a bunch of older black guys, mm -hmm. who were as country redneck as you could imagine, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of where I take those characters from. Yeah. Is thinking back to them old men yeah. and how There's they act. Still some good old boys. There are a bunch of them. Lots of shades. I used to I used to live near an old guy that flew a rebel flag in his front mm -hmm. yard every day because mm -hmm. he said people misunderstood what it meant. Yeah, his Look, opinion, whatever. You know? Yeah, you know what it is. Well, okay, so I, I don't know. Here's the thing that I've. If you grow up in a different place, 
So when I came to America, I grew up in New York. Yeah. And that kind of like skews how you think about a whole bunch of different things. Yeah, you think? Right? Yeah, and it's different <laughs> for people who grow up here. I remember uh, when I first moved here, and, uh, and, and I'm out in the country, and I was walking, and there's a guy, and I was into guns and stuff like that when I was armed, and I hear some rustling like in the bush. And then a guy comes out of the bush with a shotgun and like a rabbit over his shoulder, a black guy. I was yeah. like, oh, crap. You know? yeah. I mean, this is, this is how, it doesn't really matter. This is how everyone used to live and survive down here, whether you're black, yep. white, whatever's going on. This is what you used to do. People still yep. do it. Still, you still do it, yeah. Yeah, we're getting away from those things. But, and, and these are the people who would survive versus the dudes like me that have to go to the store and buy, <laughs> and buy it. The closer I mean, you, you understand that, the closer right? you live to the earth, the better off you'll do. Yeah, yeah. You I know. mean, I saw there was a guy. Uh, I, I, can't I don't know. You could eat goats for a long time, man. So yeah, yes, I can eat some goats. <laughs> yeah, I can eat some. I got curry goat. You know, you got some goats too. Yeah, there was a guy in, um, you know, like what was it, Bubba Gump, the shrimp guy? Oh, Forrest Gump. And yeah, we got. Yeah, the, the shrimp, yeah popcorn shrimp, shrimp and, popcorn. yeah yeah <laughs> shrimp scamp and shrimp kebabs and I know some stuff bold about shrimp this. yeah that's right yeah so I mean this is the thing I saw I saw this guy I can't remember the video but there was a video where uh, a black guy was talking to a group of black people who were like yeah it's time for a revolution and all this kind of stuff and he was like okay if you guys are ready for a revolution tell me who and I'm paraphrasing him you guys can go out there I thought it was a really powerful video he was like. Who actually grows their own food? Who actually goes and shoots? And know, who knows how to use a gun, shoot a gun? Mm-hmm. You know, who's actually ready to go out here and die? Mm-hmm. Who's ready to send their kids to die? Yeah. You know, you, you guys are ready for the revolution. And we can even take that, like, outside of that. I'll say that, that's not just for black yeah. folks either. That's yeah. every, you, In my circles in particular, you hear all the time people, well, I'm ready for it to happen. I'm ready for it to happen. Nah, no, you're not. You, it's, It may feel good to say it. It may feel good to think. Mm-hmm. But... Um, the reality of it is, look around the world at any of the civil wars going on right now. Mm-hmm. They're, they're they will pale in comparison to brutality and the death and stuff that will happen in this country when it does happen because it's probably going to at some point. Yeah, and if you don't if you don't really believe it, just look at Katrina. I mean, we don't you don't even have to go too far no. back in history. No, but to look at if Katr- isn't that the thing that Katrina should have taught us all? It's what I like to tell people is that. There's romance and reality. Mm-hmm. The romance never lives up to the reality. Mm-hmm. I don't care what it is. Mm-hmm. The Alone Show on History Channel, people mm-hmm. talking about they're going to run and hide in the woods and live in the woods and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, sitting in your house and your AC where you can take a hot shower and mm-hmm. get a drink of water out of the fridge, that all sounds good. Um, the reality of those things is it sucks. Bad. Mm-hmm. Bad. Yeah. Now, so. you did the Alone Show. Yeah, I did. I know, yeah. you know. I, uh, so I know. I haven't seen the show. How was that? Oh, it was, I enjoyed doing it. I just, okay. you know, Did you me. And, I don't know. No, I had, a, back? <laughs> I had a pack of wolves show up in my camp, and, and me and canines just don't get along. Was it real? I mean, oh, I it's hundred percent real. It is legit. I yeah. Done, no, actually, I have done a reality show, but I didn't do like I was. I did a little section of a reality show, believe it or not. So, um, but I haven't, like, you full-blown went yeah. into this reality no, show. I mean, what was that like? They dropped you off with camera gear, waved goodbye, and said, call us when you're ready to leave. I mean, it was legit. So, and how long were you there? <laughs> Second night, the wolves showed up. Oh, really? The wolves? Three wolves came into my camp. And it's not like they came in sniffing around and I got scared. No, they came crashing down a ridge. It sounded like dogs fighting or fornicating or uh, killing okay. something. I don't know what they were doing. It was god-awful sound. Mm-hmm. And... I, me and dogs just don't blend. I got bit, not at last shot, shot before that. I got mm-hmm. bit by a canine on a gun range. Wow. Okay. That when the at dog shot show, at, at shot media show, day? not a media day, at one of the offsite oh, events. Oh, like, like one, one of those, those super tactical, tactical things, things where there's no cameras? cameras? Yeah. And mm-hmm. this canine showed up, started barking at me like immediately. And the owners are apologizing. I'm like, look, it's, your dog's fine. It's not your dog. Just keep it away from me or it will bite me. They're like, no, no, it won't bite you. But I'm like, yes, it will bite me. Do you have some special smell or taste? Just me and dogs, man. I don't know. It's just me <laughs> Do and you dogs. Have dogs. Yeah, I've got three dogs. Oh, okay. Four dogs. I got four dogs. Oh, okay. And it's never my dogs. It's other people's dogs. Mm-hmm. It's just a just a thing. And even I was with Alan Kay. We were driving down uh, the strip in Vegas, and Alan starts laughing. I'm driving, and I'm like, "What?" And he's like, "Look!" And I look out the window, 
and there's a dog in the car beside us, just like losing <laughs> his you, mind, are you, crashing are into you the glass. Damien? Dude, I don't you know might what be it Damien, is. Man. And yeah. Alan was laughing his <laughs> laughing his ass off. He thought that was the funniest thing he'd ever seen. Even at the range, the day that the dog bit me, mm-hmm. all those guys thought that was hilarious. They laughed. <laughs> all those yeah, rangers and the seals, all those people that were there, they were all laughing. They thought that was the greatest and thing. And well, those kinds of dogs are usually very controlled, trained. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are the you know some of the best dogs. I've got a neighbor that <coughs> trains. Uh, <coughs> Um, Belgian Malinois mm-hmm. and I'll go to his house and he'll be like oh hey you want me to let the dogs out I'm like no no don't let those dogs out don't let them dogs out whatever you do he's like oh they're very well trained I'm like yeah they all are until they bite your ass you yeah. know what I mean you so. probably taste like bacon yeah, I don't know what it is uh, but you know I'm so I'm not afraid of dogs. I don't uh-huh. walk around in fear, but I do keep my eye on them and know? they didn't let you for a loan I'm assuming they didn't let you go out there armed right okay. no no they were not about to let us go armed okay I did have a bow um but they came at night, mm-hmm. and I had yet to even assemble the bow. And on Vancouver Island, it is so dark at night, it's like being underground. You can't see nothing. Mm-hmm. So even if I had a bow, what was I going to do with it? Plus, there was three of them. Yeah, I mean. And I wasn't going to turn a flashlight on and try yeah. to take a shot at one of them. I was hoping they yeah. didn't see me, you know mm-hmm. I mean? But I know they knew I was there. Right. Um, but they probably had, well, they obviously had no interest in me because they didn't bother me. But at the time... That's not a good situation for me. Okay. Now, had it been during the day where I could have seen them, it probably mm-hmm. wouldn't have affected me as badly. So what happened after that? Did you have to go to, like, did you go to the, one of the special hotels that Bear Grylls goes to? No, that's <laughs> not what they do with you when they pull you out. <laughs> they, okay. did, um, they did isolate us for a while, and then, and then they sent, put us on a plane and sent us home. So. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here, I'm going to hit you up with some questions because there's sure. a bunch of questions. Let me yeah. uh, let me read this. Hold it up, Lola. Let's see. Okay, so that people want to know, what do you think about what's going on in Antarctica? With the Russians? Um, I, I'm, I'm assuming. That's yeah, with the, probably with the Russians talking about building a base up yeah. there. What are the basics for anyone looking to start to start up writing? Uh, or is it writing? Probably, I don't know if it's writing or getting into prepping. We could do both. Mm-hmm. And then are water catchment systems illegal in Florida? If yes, why? You sound better a bit closer to the, the microphone. Like the this. microphone. Oh, me? It's for you. Oh. oh that's a little bit right. Can you leave that there, Lou, so I can see him? So. Yeah. So like, All right. So the... the hey, listen, we could be ghetto here. Everyone understands. That's right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So the basics for anyone looking to start, um, if you're talking about prepping, my, my first piece of advice is just to start. Don't matter where you start. Mm-hmm. You know, look at your basic needs. You know, food, water security, medical, energy. And by energy, I mean everything from gasoline to batteries to Coleman lamp fuel, whatever your energy is going to be. Um, generators, if you, if you can go that route. Solar power, if you can go that route. Wind power, you know. Evaluate your environment and, and plan to provide for those things, you know. Uh, some people say they don't have the money to get started. You can always get started with food. It's real easy, a thing we call copy canning. You know, when you go to the store to buy groceries, the things you buy all the time, you buy repeatedly, mm-hmm. you just buy an extra one of those. And you pick a spot in your pantry where you put those things. Right. Write the date on the top of it that you bought it, too. Okay. Just a month in the year. And then every time you go shopping, um, you just buy another one. And you keep, keep doing this until you get three or four built up in there of each item. Whatever it is, you know, and then the next time you need one, you take one from the back of the pantry, the oldest, use it. There's a time limit on that. Then when you, well, it's actually far greater than people think. Okay. Um, Use it, and the next time you go to the store, buy the one to replace the one you used, buy the one to have. Now, as far as the time limit on canned goods, there was a study done not too long ago. There was some food that was found that had been canned 80 years ago. Mm -hmm. It was opened up. It was 100% safe to eat. Wow. Consistency was off. Mm-hmm. Vitamin and mineral content were way down, okay. but it was edible. It, had, it was edible. It was it edible. Had some kind of. Um, it had something for you, content. yeah, okay. something. So <clears throat> you can use you can use canned food way way expiration dates are for the most part on that because of lawyers. That's why they're there. Okay, I see. You know. Yeah. Okay. So, so they, you don't have to because I know that's probably a thing that people you know people and also people see the extremes right. We see like extreme preppers. Or, well, it, you know. The, like the doomsday prepper thing and all that, yeah. that, that, I wouldn't use that as a reference for anything. That was just designed to make people look crazy. Mm-hmm. And for like me, what I do, the canned foods that we buy in bulk, as they start to expire, 
I pour them into my freeze dry machine. I freeze dry them, rebag them, put them on my shelf then. Mm -hmm. And I just keep that stuff. Okay. So that's another option. Freeze dry machines are very expensive, but okay. it's amazing what you can do with one. Um, so, so what? So how much? Did, like, um, how long does the freeze dry last? Up to twenty five years. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and to get a freeze dry machine, is that expensive? Hmm. Around three thousand okay. dollars. So they're not they're not unobtainable. You know, I mean, they are an investment, but that's just that. I see it as an investment because anything you buy today is going to be cheaper than tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So if you're buying food today and preserving it for five years from now, it's going to be cheaper today than it'll be five years from now. Right. Absolutely. So it's going to you're going to make money on it. You're going to make money on it. Somebody asked about water catchment systems in Florida. No, they're not illegal. So what is a water catchment system for those of us that don't know? Well, that's where if you had a gutter set up on your house and directed those into tanks to hold the water, like in California and several other states, that's illegal to do. It's illegal to catch the rainwater on your property and retain it. So in California and places like that, the water belongs to who? To, to, to the state? To the state or in some of the western states, the water belongs to wherever it will stop flowing. You follow me? So if there's a reservoir someplace, the water that fell on your property belongs to the guy that owns that reservoir. Oh, okay. That's how they... So, so by, you, by you catching it and using the catchment system... You're stealing his water. Yeah, it's like cutting into a pipeline and taking... But it's rain that falls from the sky. Yeah, that's just... That's liber liberal thinking. That's right. you, you got to have a mental disorder to come up with that that yeah. math. And we're going to have more of that, especially in places like uh, Chicago. If you look at all the things oh, yeah. Chicago is starting to do and the things they're starting to tax people on. And well, all they're that, bankrupt. Yeah. I, you know, I, I watched a video the other day that said anybody that has a, an Illinois state pension, mm -hmm. anywhere in the state, better pre be prepared for about a 70% cut to that payment. They're bankrupt. You know, Mega Millions Lottery and Powerball just pulled out of Illinois because they can't pay the winners. Powerball wow. Lottery will no longer sell tickets in Illinois because if you win and live in Illinois, Illinois State doesn't have the money to pay you. Wow, I missed that one. <laughs> That's how bad it's getting That's in Illinois. That's a big deal, yeah. That's a big deal. And then I guarantee you someone's going to start, like, you know, the black market of buying the tickets and out of reselling state. them, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it very well could happen. Yeah, and then so. I'm sure someone will say that's illegal <laughs> if you do that. Well, then what if you're an Illinois you. state resident? You know, well, you're a resident of Illinois. You need to go to your home state and claim. How are they going to do that? And then you yeah. could still be in a world of hurt. So wow, okay. So yeah, they just didn't. They just proposed a 37 percent income tax increase in Illinois too. Yeah, to the state yeah. income tax. Yeah. And the governor and isn't, vowed, their, isn't their credit rating going to go down to junk? I think. Oh yeah, very soon. Yeah, very they're soon. They're going to go to junk, which makes them because California is not junk. Right? Not junk yet. They're getting there though. I yeah. mean, they're junk, but they're not rated as junk. Yeah, this is amazing. I mean, and then we're and then there's people trying to set up Puerto Rico to come in as a state. You know. Yeah, because they're in such financial problems. Yeah. You know, they always turn down voting for statehood in the past. Mm -hmm. But now that they're in debt and their economy yeah. sucks, they want to well, shut it off on the rest sovereignty. of sovereignty. Yeah. You know, which it honestly is... Should have had it, in my opinion. They should have given it to them. Um, yes, I, I agree. I and mean, then on the flip side from them, it wasn't a good idea. I get that. For yeah. them, it wasn't a good idea. Yeah. But that's what they wanted. They should have given it to right. them. Right, yeah. Why should we now have to pay for their poor decisions down there? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. bad. Um, so, so there's going to be a lot of things coming there. So, okay, what's the other questions that we've got here? So... The thing going on in Antarctica, um, well, I see that as just another battleground between us and Russia. You know, the Russians are talking about building a base up there. They've been running a lot of subs up there. Um, if you watch Twitter, there's some Twitter feeds where you can watch um, military aviation assets that are airborne, what kind, where they're at, where they're going. Um, and there's been a major increase in nuclear detection nuclear deterrent aircraft, both theirs and ours, flying um, in a huge way. Mm -hmm. So the Cold War that everybody thought was dead is not dead. It's it's back on. And, and it's actually, I, thought it ever, I thought it ever died. Well, you know, they just recently moved the doomsday clock up one minute. Mm. They moved it forward. We're okay. closer now to nuclear war than we were in the 50s. Yeah. It's been at three minutes to midnight forever. Yeah. They just moved it forward. Yeah, I don't think it really died. I think that was just something set up, maybe. Well, when Gorbachev was there, it did die. Things mm. cooled off quite a bit, but then Russia was feeding on itself. It was cannibalizing itself at the time, and mm. that was its biggest concern. 
Mm-hmm. Now we have the United States wants to remain the global superpower, and they want to try to keep Russia in a bottle. Um, where where Russia and like and people may disagree with this, but I agree with Trump on one point. We could be good allies with Russia. Mm-hmm. Why do you, Why do you say that? Well, they want to be. What What Russia wants more than anything is to be um, accepted by the world as a superpower. They're looking for that validation. Okay. And I so think they they, felt, maybe they felt like they had it before and they want that position back. Well, and, and now Putin is a bit of a wild card because he came from the KGB, mm-hmm. you know, um, and he's been quoted as saying he wants to restore the Soviet Union. Mm-hmm. So there is that side of things. But maybe if, maybe if the world gave the guy the acknowledgement and the validation that, that Russia, the country, is looking for, maybe they would throttle things back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Instead of increasing their nuclear arsenal and us talking about pulling out of a nuclear treaty and stuff like that, mm-hmm. that's just making it worse. It's not the politicians that are doing this stupid stuff that are going to pay the price. It's us. Right. We're the ones going to pay the price. They're the ones making the foolish decisions. We're the ones that are going to have to pay that bill. Right. Well, what you've been doing all this time is not working. Maybe we should try something else. Yeah. And what do you think about, you know, obviously there's a lot being made about Russia hacking our elections and all that. Uh, personally, I'm pretty sure that we've... That America, I shouldn't say we... Has probably America. hacked every election that's yeah. ever happened in the last yeah. 75 years. Absolutely. Well, or not 75 years, but as long as the computer and internet's been around, yeah. we've and been hacking. before that, they've controlled... They've we've controlled manipulated and interfered and yeah. everything else, yeah. I always think it's funny when I hear that. I was born in Guyana, um, lived there until I was five years old. My parents grew up there. And, um, <laughs> you know... America yeah. totally manipulated the living crap out of that place. We do everything everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you know, the NSA was snooping on foreign leaders' cell phones. I mean, come on. Mm-hmm. How can we be this holier, righteous, and thou attitude when we're doing the same stuff? Our government is doing the same stuff around the world. And I know a lot of people disagree with that, that we are better than Russia and we are better. But we're not. Our government is doing the same stuff. And, and people need to get out of that false paradigm of the left-right thing which everybody is stuck in today and that's why we are where we are because of that left right paradigm crap Mm -hmm. um i'm not a republican i'm damn sure not a democrat Mm -hmm. i'm not a liberal Mm -hmm. i'm definitely not a progressive i'm more libertarian than anything Mm -hmm. so yeah and even that even that like label i don't particularly like i I believe in freedom i really truly well if anybody that believes in freedom and this will get a lot of folks if, if at your core you believe that, one, you should be allowed to do anything you want as long as you don't interfere on others, you believe that the only reasonable excuse for violence is in self-defense, then you are at heart an anarchist. Because anarchy, the very term people always get wrong, they think when you say anarchy, they think Antifa and burning down Berkeley and that kind of thing. Anarchy simply means lack of archy, lack of a government. Mm-hmm. We're just left alone to, yeah. to make our own deals with each other. And people say, well, who will build the roads? Nobody will build it. Somebody will build a road. Somebody, and you'll pay to drive on it. Yeah, so you're saying you're just like if you're a small government or minuscule government. No government. No, no government. No government. No government. Right. That's anarchy. Anarchy is no government. Mm-hmm. And everybody says we need a government. But what for? Why Why do we need this layer to get between the interactions? Like, like in Florida, if... You get the police get called to your house for domestic violence, and let's just say that the wife or the husband, vice versa, whatever, says the uh, one pushed the other. Mm-hmm. Somebody's going to jail mm-hmm. because the state is determined that's the best way to stop. That's how you deal with it. Someone take take someone to jail. Someone, yeah. Mostly the husband. Most ninety nine percent of the time it's the husband. Yes, right. So he's going to go to jail, mm-hmm. and that's just a tool. Anything that the state. And, and I mean it with a capital S. Anything the state says they're going to do for you, add this. This comes from my buddy Jack Spierko. He's a real smart guy. Add this to it. With the threat of violence at the point of a gun, no matter what it is, we're going to provide you health care with the threat of violence at the point of a gun because they're going to enforce it through the IRS. So what happens if you don't pay your taxes? Agents show up at your house, take you to jail. Mm-hmm. Everything is with the threat of violence at the point of a gun. Everything. Mm-hmm. The government is violence incarnate. That's how they operate. Mm -hmm. You know, extortion and violence. One of the two is going to make you do what they want you to do because that's Mm -hmm. all it's about is control. Um, Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you on that, man. And I think it's kind of like uh, I always tell people this. It's when it comes to pharmaceuticals, which I think are the worst drugs that we have. And I know Lola is a pharmacist, but her profession has done a lot of destruction. (laughs) <laughs> well, I don't. I, no, I would disagree. I would say Lola's profession as a pharma, pharmacist hasn't. Mm-hmm. 
Right, but the big, ph pharma yeah, has. big pharma has. Right, yeah, exactly. You know, pharmacists are out there trying to help people. Yes. And clean that up. Uh, and they but, take an oath too. So, yeah. But you're right. Big pharma is the one that's right. killing people. There's a yeah. debate now over, um, you know, vaccinations, which has been going on for years. Yeah. And there's a lot of evidence out there that they're not good for you. Yeah. And yeah. also we see this. Like I, I actually worked in mental institutions and I saw people taking the drugs and they always had these cups that were just overfilled with pills. And I was like, well, why are they taking all these pills? Well, it started with this one, and then they had to take this one as, to counteract that, then they had to take this one to counteract that, and on and on. And I think the analogy I was trying to make is that the government is like that, right? Oh, very you much. Know? Yeah, it started out small, and yeah. and then was like, well, we gotta have this. <laughs> well, what we have today no doesn't even remotely resemble what we were intended to have. Mm -hmm. um, and somebody mentioned that China and Russia are the, are the new superpowers. And that we're on our way down, especially financially. And that's true to a degree, but China's financial house is in ruins, and so is Russia's. Yeah. Also, I don't know. I mean, me personally, here's what I think about America versus anywhere else, uh, or Russia, China. I think that um, we have stuff here in America that they want. So now China is going around the world and getting these resources by taking over countries. So I mentioned Guyana. China has a heavy presence in South America, Africa, lots of places. It's because of the resources that they need now and they pro uh, project they're going to need going into the future. Um, Russia has those same issues as well. You know what makes us different here in America? <laughs> we're, the bre we're a bread basket. We are. You know, we, we grow things. <laughs> We grow. That's about all we do now. We don't make yeah. jack no more. But Russia yeah. and Ukraine are also bread baskets. Big yeah. parts of it are. Um, and, and, and if those three countries, this this sounds a little, you know, uh, unicorn pie in the sky ish. But if China, Russia, and the U.S. could work together, we could make the world a more stable place. But mm -hmm. everybody wants to protect their sphere of influence, and that's what this is all about. Look at the islands in the South China Sea. Which I don't agree with China building islands out in the middle of the South China Sea and then trying to claim that it's their territorial waters. They're just trying to extend their borders. And so to counteract that, we keep sailing naval vessels past them and near them and to irritate them. Mm -hmm. um, just like Russia flying, you know, bear bombers off the coast of Alaska and California, which are nuclear capable bombers, mm -hmm. they're doing that just to poke us. And then we poke them in Syria, you know. And that's if, if war starts between us and Russia, that's probably where it'll kick off is in Syria. Mm -hmm. um, it's getting when you have two world superpowers in the same little sandbox um, back in different sides that are killing each other and fighting is the same old story like we had in Afghanistan. It's gonna eventually there's gonna be a Russian killed or an American killed or a by plane or something. That yeah, someone's gonna shoot down a plane or or. We're going to drop, call it an airstrike or an artillery strike on a position, you know, that, that we say is Hezbollah, but Russia's going to come back and said, you know, had two or three of their people in, and then it'll be on. That's mm -hmm. what will start it. And, and no, at that point, nobody will care why or what led up to it. it, it it'll be a war then. Um, so, do, so when it comes to resources, I just want to go back to this real quick. Who do you think would starve out of us, out of those, out of Russia, China, and America? Do you think we would wind up starving? I know, I know. In the cities here, it seems like if if things went crazy and they couldn't get, you know, they couldn't get food going, that they would starve. But do you think, in general, the rest of us? Well, that'll be around food? the world. I think that uh, people in cities will suffer. Mm -hmm. But then, too, even even the folks outside the city, unless you know how to grow food or and you know how to hunt, which everybody will be hunting at that point, so you'll be competing with one another. Right. But, you know, we're still a, a, a rather strong agricultural society, but we're based heavily on petroleum products to get it done, tractors. Mm -hmm. okay, you know, see, yeah. We don't have the people. We don't have as many farmers in this country as we used to have growing the f same amount of food. Or Actually, we grow more food now when we had probably ten times the farmers we do because of technology. Uh, so it would be a bit of a toss-up. China, I think, would be in the worst spot because they have so many people. They just have so many people, and they have to import food. Um, I think they're a net importer of food overall. Russia, the Russian people are used to a hard life, and people in America are not used to a hard life. We're used to flipping a switch, and the light comes on. We're not used to flipping a switch and saying, oh, we don't have power today. Over there, they're kind of used to that. They're also used to doing more. Mm -hmm. as, as opposed to us here, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mass transit in some of those countries is better than it is here. You know, like um, I was talking to a buddy that just got back from Japan or China. 
And he said that, that in China, they only sell 250,000 license plates a month. Yeah. And that the average license plate costs 20 grand. Yeah, it's, it's basically a lottery to even get the right to get a license plate. Yeah. And they're doing it to try to limit the number of cars on the road because their economy for the what the middle class is kind of booming, but it's all based on debt, just like we are here. They're falling in the same trap we yeah, are. You can get a woman just based on the fact that you're able to get a car. <laughs> oh, you can get a lot easier now over there from my buddy was just telling me. Um, yeah, yeah. Someone asked, when is Book 8 being released? Book 8 is out. You can get it uh, on Amazon now. You want to just show that again? Yeah, so here it is. Here is Book 8. It's right here. It's ready. Um, it's only available on Amazon right now, just part of the way I release books. But the audio, the audio will be released June or July 11th. So you can pre-order it now from Audible. So it's up. Um, so who's the genius? I mean, it's, it's, a real, it's a real cool way you go. Everything has home. So it's that going was all home. me. Huh? That was all me. That was all. That was all me. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, going home, surviving yeah. home, escaping home. Yeah, that wasn't always easy to come up with a new home a either. Thing. Yeah, now you're like home. Like now I got here home stuff. Well, no, I wanted to flip like the title. Home Depot. Home Depot. That's the next one. <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to change the title scheme in book eight, and um, I thought of a number of things, and but in their heart, these books are about home. That's trying to you know. True. And especially in that world, trying to maintain some semblance of normalcy, comfort, mm -hmm. home is where those things are. So It seems simple, but it really, you, you hit it spot yeah. on the first time, so you might as well stick with Somebody it. asked about uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, like Bitcoin. Bitcoin and, mm -hmm. and that, Ethereum. And, um, I, don't, I don't own any cryptocurrencies, mainly because I don't like to own things I can't hold. That mm -hmm. makes me nervous. And, um, and what good is that going to do to us if things go south, right? I mean, that's all technology-based, isn't it? It's all technology-based. In a functioning society, I think cryptocurrencies are awesome because the government has no control over them whatsoever. Right. I think they're fantastic. Yeah. And they're going to start, though. They're obviously putting some the, laws. They're trying, like but, that, yeah. again, they, you can't go anywhere and get Bitcoins. They have to be created, you know, So, and only so many of them can be created. So they there's not much they can do with it. Um but I prefer gold and silver. You know, somebody asked about the gold standard. Um, and get in the Silk Road. <laughs> I think the days of the Silk Road are over. But um, <laughs> I think the, one of the biggest crimes ever committed against our country was being taken off the gold standard. Because somebody asked about, should we go back to the gold standard? Right. So um, you're talking about with like uh, when we... when. Our Net. currency was actually based on backed gold. On, and, backed by gold. And, and that there was actually stuff in Fort Knox. Is there anything in there, you think? I don't know. They, they, haven't, they won't be audited. Yeah. They keep voting no to audit Fort Knox. Uh, the Germans, what was it, earlier this year, late last year, the Germans requested all their gold to be sent back to them. And did they get it? I, ha I don't know if they ever got it or not. I know there was a lot of talk about it at the time, mm -hmm. about whether or not it was actually here. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I like gold because gold will always be worth something. Now, in, in the near term, after whatever an event like Katrina, gold coin. Well, after Katrina, gold coins probably would have got you something. But after a nationwide event, gold coins may not get you something immediately. But as you progress out of the immediate disaster, gold and silver will always be worth something because it always has been. So if you can't, if you're not able to do, you know, I always try to hit that question. Like if you can't do gold and silver and do those things, what's the next best thing? There's tradable things, right? What do you think are good tradable things? Well, think outside the box a little bit. Um, there's things, gold and silver, obviously a commodity. Ammo is going to be probably right below those two, in my opinion. Um, but the other things, this sounds ridiculous. Feminine hygiene products mm -hmm. will probably be one of the most in-demand products out there. Yeah, it's going to be uh, toilet paper. What do you think to about toilet paper? And, well, soap, toothpaste, toothbrushes. I um, I was in a, years ago, I was in a uh, thrift store in South Florida. And there was this old man in there, a little old guy, with like eight bags of shoes he bought from the thrift store. All kinds, of varieties, whatever. And I just went up to him. I said, what are you going to do with all those shoes? Mm -hmm. And he looked at the bags, and in a real thick accent, he's like, I lived through the collapse of the Soviet Union. He goes, and these are what people wanted more than anything. He said, with these, I could get anything I wanted. Yeah. Because yeah. think about it. We go from a society where we, like, you know, I'm an hour and 45 minutes from home right now, but I jumped in my truck. I don't think twice about it. I jumped in my truck. I drive up here. Yeah. You go from a, from a world where you do that 
to where your world is boundaried by the distance that you can walk. It gives it, you know, footwear takes on an entirely different yeah. notion. And the footwear made today isn't of the highest quality. The yeah. stuff you buy at Walmart and Target, it's not made for walking yeah. all day, every day outside. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what, the, that is a big thing. I can tell you, like, my dad, um, we were talking, you know, off camera about my dad and why my parents left Guyana. And my dad had it pretty good in Guyana. He had a government job. He was responsible for building up the infrastructure. Mm-hmm. He could have been the prime minister of Guyana. He played chess with the prime minister yeah. of Guyana when I was a little kid. I hit under the table and drunk their beers and stuff like that. <laughs> and I always, I always say, you know, Dad, why did you leave? And he always tells me, I, you know, I wanted you guys to be free, and that's why we left. But he told me the story, um, you know, several months ago that really hit home, and it connects to that. He said that he knew that he was in trouble with the socialism that was going on in Guyana when his shoes wore out. And those were the only pair of shoes he had. And when he went to buy a replacement pair of shoes, even though he had this big job and everything, it was it would have been so difficult for him to get a pair of shoes. He said, you know, when I thought about that, and I was like, this is me. Imagine my children living like this. And so here I am today. You know, you're 100% right, man. You just brought that home for me. Yep. When you said that, that he didn't want me, you know, he didn't want him and the rest of us to have to think, how the hell are we going to get shoes? Yeah. Another another primary commodity, I think, which has always been a commodity and sometimes has been worth more than gold, which we take for granted today because it's so easy to get and we think nothing of it is so cheap, is salt. Because mm. um, your body needs salt. You know, if you're in the, the middle of the country and you don't live near a salt mine, of course, but where are you going to get salt? Mm-hmm. You know, salt's used for everything from preserving foods um, to treating wounds in some cases. Yeah. Um, and you're going to have to have it. Yeah, um, absolutely. Somebody asked if the books will be released in Sweden. They should be available in Sweden on Amazon. Oh, we've got um, some people from Sweden now. Yeah, if they're, if they're not available in Sweden on Amazon, um, hit up my Facebook page and let me know, and I'll try to get that resolved for you. But they should be there. Yeah. Um, I see uh, Safety Harbor Firearms. My buddy Walter is out there, and he said knowledge, knowledge. At, well, to, to make, know how to make things from junk. Yeah, skills is the one piece of gear you can't lose. That's how I like to tell people that. So learn everything you can. And because um, you can't lose it once you know it. Yeah, if you if you survive, like we were talking about, you can do that. And I actually have a friend that collects bicycles and fixes them home. Like, what's going on with these bicycles? But guess what? In a situation like that, we're all thinking today, right now, we don't need bicycles. That's right. But you're going to need the hell out of a bicycle when there's no fuel and that's right. All that kind of stuff. Right? You look at North Korea society where everybody does own a car, and what's the main mode of transportation? The bicycle. bicycles, yeah. So somebody asked if we should repeal NAFTA. Um, I say yes, simply because free trade doesn't need to be regulated by the government. If it's free trade, why do we need to be told how to do it if it's free trade? I think this we should be allowed to make those deals between businesses on the side of the borders, between businesses without the government getting involved. Um, it was not a good thing for us. And then it says, tech is great, but it continues to kill jobs in America. What are your thoughts on jobs in America? Tech's killing jobs in America, but 90% of that, I think, is the fault of workers in America. These these $15 an hour minimum wages, uh, McDonald's just came out with that thing the other day that said they're going to put kiosks in, I forget how many McDonald's, and it's going to eliminate like 2,500 jobs. Yeah. Because, it's, I mean, look at what's happening in San Francisco. What was minimum wage in San Francisco? 16, somewhere yeah. between 16 and $20 yeah. and an it's, hour? It's cratering. So, yeah. is, so is Seattle, same thing. Yeah. Their economies are suffering um, because of these arbitrarily imposed living wage things that, that feel good to say and everything, yeah. but they're a net loss for jobs because there's fewer people. You, you know, a small business guy that, does, let's say, he's running a little deli, he may have had two people before at $8 an hour, but now that he has to pay – each one fifteen dollars an hour. He's going to cut one of those people, you know, because mm-hmm. he can't afford two of them. So it's it, overall everything shown has been a net loss in jobs. Just like the the ammo tax or the mm-hmm. gun tax in Seattle, mm-hmm. um, they're losing money on the deal. All the gun shops left town except for one guy, and it's a net loss in revenue. Mm-hmm. They were predicting they're going to make all this money, and they're actually losing money because of yeah. it. It's you. You cannot. You can't tax your way to. You can't, you can't tax, tax your way, way to, to it. Solution. You cannot legislate safety or fairness. 
Mm-hmm. doesn't happen. You just cannot do it. So let me ask you this before you go to the next question. I know we probably have a bunch of them, and, and you know, obviously yeah. you've been hanging out all day. But you, you're a really smart guy, in my opinion, even though you know, I've spent some time making fun of you. <laughs> but I love you, man. You're, really, you're, you're a really cool down You are, you are the first, and you won't be the last. Don't worry, Hank. <laughs> yeah. So you, I know you spend a lot of time thinking about these doomsday scenarios and writing the stories for us that we all enjoy. But flip that a little bit and tell us, what is it you think that we can do to make America really better? I don't want to say make it great again and people get caught up in that, but what, you know, I know you spend time thinking about how it's getting worse. What can we do to reverse that and make it better? Uh, you're not going to like the answer. Sadly, at this point, I honestly do not believe we can. Okay. The division is so great right now between the left and the right. Um, you know, the left has always called the right violent um, and hateful and all this other stuff. And now we're watching the left, groups like Antifa and the Workers' Union. I don't mean unions either. I mean the people calling themselves Workers' Unions. Um, They're out there supposedly protesting fascism while they dress like fascists and act like fascists. Mm -hmm. You know, they're out there to protect free speech while at the same time denying free speech. To the left, if you say anything they do not agree with, you are a bigot, a racist, a homophobe, an Islamophobe, or whatever title they want to throw on you. And and that chasm is getting broader. The right has always been slow to anger and slow to react. They're still the right's still not angry with everything that, that the left is doing out there right now. But it's starting to get angry. You see the formation of things like the John Brown Gun Club and the various left-wing militias that they're forming, which we watch the YouTube videos and we all laugh um, because it is laughable. But think about the transition that the left has made to go from anti-gun, you know, under all measures, to openly bearing arms now. That's a huge leap. And while everybody says, you know... It kind of looks like they're gearing up for something. Like if they're you know, not, they may they may be making overtures, but if they're if they're even acting like they're getting geared up, how much does it take to spark that fire and kick it off? Well, it would happen once before up in Boston, and it took one round. Yeah. So everybody says that you know the, they hope that they'll start something like that because there'll be blood in the streets and this and that. But again, I, I point back to something that my buddy John Mosby said, and some of you probably know who he is. Some of you. Don't. If you don't, I would suggest you look up John Mosby, Mountain Gorilla. Hit up his website. Um, you can also find him on um, Ford Observer at readfordobserver.com. He posts some great stuff. Western Rifle Shooters is another one. I'm not trying to just plug everybody, but I'm a firm believer in what John Mosby has to say. Um, and while the left looks laughable today and what they're doing to us is, is nonsensical, because we're picking apart the kind of tactical gear they're wearing or the weapon that they're carrying and arguing over whether or not they're airsoft. These are the same people that are actually going out on the streets, facing down the cops, getting pepper sprayed, getting clubbed in the head. They're actually out there doing it. And they're committing violence, too. They're burning stuff. They're looting stores. They're, they're assaulting people. Yeah. They're committing violence, mm-hmm. whereas we're all kind of sitting back and laughing at them and talking we're about ha, ha, ha. And, yeah. We haven't gotten mad yet. Yeah. Yeah. Now... The bad part will be when the left does get mad and the left do, or the right, excuse me, when the right does get mad and the right does lash back, it'll be pretty ugly. I have a feeling. Um, the left, I think, has no idea what they're entertaining. They think, you know, they talk about throat punching Nazis and getting scalps and this and that. Um, but I've seen plenty of videos where these morons that are protest will hit somebody, and when that person hits them back, they will actually look at them in utter shock and say, "You just hit me." You hit me first, but you hit me. Like they don't have it in their heads that at some point there's going to be self-defense and then overt, um, uh, not the offense. Yeah, that the, that the right will well offense. The, the right will stop. We haven't even really started defending ourselves yet. Eventually, we'll start defending ourselves, and then once the the defense is established, then the offense will begin. And I don't think that they're the least bit prepared for it. A lot of the right is not prepared for those things either because there's going to be casualties on this side as well, and everybody thinks that it's going to be a cakewalk, and it will not be a cakewalk. Yeah, that's That's the thing thing about all of this that I think enough people don't understand. I think there's people who are praying for it, hoping 
that we actually go here. Some people think this is going to be where they get everything that they want. Well, you trying to check out the beard? Somebody said glorious beard, and I said yes, it is. It's very nice. You're looking very sexy. I'm making sure that you're you're on there by yourself because when you're on with me, no beard. Yeah. <laughs> no beard. I've been trying for years to grow a beard. Have you? Man. Yeah. I, I stopped shaving yesterday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Actually, right. it was no shave yeah. November, I think, two years ago. Because mm-hmm. I've wife, seen pictures of you with no beard. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was the year before last. I don't remember. But my wife's like, hey, it's no shave November. You going to stop shaving? And I said, yep. Yeah. And I never started again. Like, and yeah, yeah. and shocking to me, and I and I tell this to my wife, I said, she likes it. And I said, could you imagine 25 years ago you liking this beard? She's like, oh, no. It wasn't, it wasn't in then. I'm like, I don't care what's in. I said, this is staying now, though. It's yeah. here. Yeah. Um, somebody asked what my favorite game to hunt is, and um, I like to hunt a variety of stuff because you know I don't want to pigeonhole myself in any one thing. All depends on what's available. You know, you, everybody's heard of rabbit starvation, so if that's the only thing you're eating, you could literally starve to death while you're stuffing your belly with a rabbit. So try to try to spread that out a little bit of everything. My wife won't let me hunt squirrels no more because Clyde. But um, Uh-oh. but you know, spread it around and, and uh, hunt a little bit of everything, and learn to hunt too, and learn how to process game. This is something that we're we're pro- we're bre- broaching in my next book about why in Wyoming. Learn how to process game. Learn how to process an animal. Because imagine that you're starving. The average person that doesn't know how to do this, and they come across a field and there's a cow in it. All right, they got a gun. Let's say they finally manage to shoot this cow down, and they have no idea what they're looking at. They're going to cut off as much meat as they can carry away, do a bad job of it, and leave six, seven hundred pounds of meat to rot because mm-hmm. they don't know how to handle it. So learn how to process your own stuff. Where would we turn to for that? Do you have some ideas for those like uh, city slickers like myself? Who, uh, well, there's you know, a- it would be great if you had friends and stuff like that that took you out hunting and did all those things. But what if you don't necessarily? Well, there's a lot of books. Um, there's a great book by a guy named Stephen Ranella, and it's Hunting, Processing, and Cooking Big Game, Volume 1, and Hunting, Cooking, and Processing Small Game, Volume 2, both available on Amazon. I have both of those on my bookshelf um, because, like, for instance, I've never butchered an elk. But the elk herds in Florida are pretty thin, so it's not an issue to me. But I know how to process a deer, so I could know. I know how to process an elk. I know how to process a cow. I, you know, they're, they're all put together the same way. Once you learn the fundamentals, it's pretty easy, really. Yeah. There's also a lot of videos. You can go to YouTube. Yeah. And, catch and, and uh, my friend, I learned this from the Bubba's. I do have, like, a network of Bubba's. Oh, yeah. And my friend Bubba Roadkill uh, clued me into this. Like, here in Gainesville, for example, University of Florida, Forgot somewhere in the agricultural department, they actually give classes on on how to do this stuff. I haven't seen really yet. Yeah, but Lola and I need to do. Maybe we should make some plans to do. I that was going to say interested. if you um yeah. if you it find happens that. like a few times a year, and they actually have like the game classes, and they show you how to tell if it's diseased. And he's always trying to get me to yeah. go because he thinks it's really important. If, so. if you find that and let me know, I'll come and let's and let's try to coordinate with them and see if they will let us do some filming while we're there. Yeah. To promote that for them, absolutely. Because I yeah. think that's a resource that would be would be hugely beneficial for a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and if you guys out there know um, any universities that have that going on, University of Florida is pretty big. I don't, there's there may be some other universities here in Florida or around the country that do it, but definitely um, that's going on here. So, somebody asked said, uh, you know, food and ammo will be the new currency. Um, a lot of things will will be currency. You're going to be in a barter economy. For lack of a better term, that's what you're going to be doing. Um, And anything that is a resource will be a currency. I'm not a huge fan of trading ammo um, simply because I don't want to trade ammo to somebody who might want to use it on me later. Mm -hmm. And you never know in that kind of society how it will go. But if I have nothing else to trade and you got a can of corn and I want a can of corn, I can either trade you some ammo or I can try to use my ammo to take it. It's a lot safer to trade you a little ammo to get a can of corn. Yeah. Um, but yeah, food. You know, how do you feel about taking things from people? I think there's a lot of people that are preparing for that situ- for these kinds of situations, and they think that's how they're going to get by. What do you think about that? If their whole survival mindset is based on the fact that they're going to use a gun to fulfill their daily needs, they're just not going to live long simply through attrition. If you're going to have, if you have to use a gun every day, not even a because you're trying to go out and rob people or whatever, but if, if you're, a lot of preppers, you know, envision, you know, the gunfights and this and that, you're just not going to live long. It's a simple fact. You're just, you know, mm-hmm. eventually you're going to catch the golden BB. 
Um, but if your philosophy is you're going to go out and raid other people, you're going to be short-lived because you're going to eventually come up against somebody who's harder, better prepared, um, sees you first, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, in an ideal world, I would never, ever have to fire a shot in self-defense in my life because I have a feeling I'd live a lot longer that way. Mm-hmm. And two, if you, if you get shot, even if it's not a major wound, like all preppers, you know, we've got our Israeli bandages and we've got our tourniquets and I'm prepared. That's great. What are you going to do after that? You just caught a round in your left femoral artery and you're bleeding out. You put your tourniquet on. You stop the bleed. You've killed the bad guy. Now what are you going to do? You've got to take that, that tourniquet off at some point. What are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Nobody has a plan for that after that. Everybody has a tourniquet and their plan stops about applying a tourniquet. That's a good way for your leg to rot off. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're living that kind of a lifestyle where, where you're daily using a firearm, you're not going to live long. Mm-hmm. Avoiding confrontation is going to be the best way to, you know, to live a long, healthy life, not seeking it out or actively engaging it on a daily basis. Right. Well, when are you going to write about us in American Redoubt? Well, I think um, King Yamayama Rawls up there has pretty much covered you guys or or if, or if he hasn't covered you guys properly, let me know, because I'd love to come spend some time up there poking around. What, uh, what, what are these guys talking about? The American Redoubt. Yeah. It's an area up in Idaho. Mm-hmm. A lot of hardcore, very hardcore preppers live up there. Oh, okay. Very okay. hardcore. <laughs> it also, unfortunately, has a large contingent of um, white nationalists, okay. for lack of a better People term. People who go, like, all deliverance on your ass? Yeah. Okay. Um, but it also has a, a large contingent of... Very dedicated homesteaders. Mm-hmm. There's some really good stuff happening up in the Redoubt. Mm-hmm. And I had actually looked at moving up there because Idaho is one of the only the few states in this country I live in because I won't live in one that the uh, state wishes to uh, extort me as well as the federal government. They have no state income tax. So you're thinking Idaho. Because, you know, from reading uh, Cry Havoc, I was kind of thinking, like, is Chris hinting here that he's going to live in Texas? I, now, haven't, fin- yeah. I haven't finished it, so don't. don't well, Texas is one of those states. Tennessee, Texas, um, Idaho, Wyoming. Um, New Hampshire, any state that doesn't have a state income tax is on my state of possibilities to live in. Any state with an income tax is off the possibilities list. Now, there's also ways around that, and I have theories of what I could do to avoid their state income tax. I mean, I'm extorted enough. I don't need to be paying salt to another king. I do it uh, enough. Yeah. Um, did you want to go to another question? I, I've got something here. I don't know how yeah, many questions are Yeah, go for it. There's only two there, yeah. Okay, so here's something that I'm curious about from reading your books. Um, and in its relation to the gun community. You've got a lot of gun guys out there where you're a gun guy. I'm a gun guy. Um, and in your books, what I like is that you really, you, you put this in a very fair, balanced way you show gun guys. And what I mean by that is you don't show that these gun guys are always good. No. You know, so... And, and it, you know, in the scenarios in your books, it, it, it's really, you know, you can see, and I think in reality, you can see how some of the gun guys are going to be the ones that, that we're going to be going up against as well. Some of these guys are going to turn into bullies, work for the government. I've, you know. I've got a, a guy I know. I'm not going to say what state he's in even, but he's a police officer, and he's on the SWAT team for his department. And I was talking to him one time about prepping, and he just kind of shrugged his shoulders, and he's like, well, me and my guys have already talked about it. And he's like, we kick doors for a living now. We're going to kick doors for a living then. So now that's, this is... Uh, this I mean, that's what we're going to be going up against. Unfortunately, I don't think it should be that way, but like you said, I don't know if we're going to... I don't think there's any way for us to get together. And We're not going to get together. I, I think that we've crossed that Rubicon long ago, I, I think. I don't... The divisions that have been sown in this country are, are too deep, too great. I mean, think about it. They're, they're splitting us in every possible way they can. Everything from from race to political ideology to sexual orientation, um, sexual identity, uh, I, just everything. Anything you can imagine, they, they're driving a wedge into it. And it's, to, and it's to fracture us as far apart as it can to try to maintain control over the chaos. Because as long as chaos reigns... The government can yeah. keep control. I mean, even, even like down to like cops against police. I'm always trying to tell people, you know, it, it shouldn't really be this way, but it's this is one of those things. Oh, yeah. It's getting the yeah. society, uh, the, the people to not be trustful of law enforcement and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. And vice versa, you know, where I think we're both 
uh, kind of like building into this frothing lather where we think we're against each other, we hate each other. Those guys are going to start planning. These guys are going to start yep. planning, and we and we're really the same guys. We're the same. No, we're the no same separation. Guys. I'm a I'm a huge supporter of law enforcement. I'm a huge detractor to bad law enforcement. I mean, I don't like bad cops. I don't agree with any unjustified shooting. Black Lives Matter makes a big deal every time some black person is killed in the country. I'm upset anytime anyone is. You know, mm-hmm. um, there was a guy in Lake County where I live. The police were looking for a stolen motorcycle. They saw a stolen motorcycle at this apartment complex. They went up, knocked on a door um, at like two in the morning. The guy answered the door with a gun in his hand. They shot and killed him. Yeah, I mean that's what you know. Knocked door at two o'clock. Rule justifiable. Yeah. And they weren't just knocking. They were, like, beating on this guy's door. Right. Rule just a file. Uh, there was another one in South Carolina. An, an old man, like 67 years old, was pulled over to red light. Um, South Carolina police officer. I forget what city it was. Um, the old man gets out of his truck, walks to the bed of the truck, grabs his cane out of the bed of the truck, picks it up. As soon as the cane clears the bed of the truck, the officer is now out of the car, shoots him. Yeah. I think that's... Rule that. justifiable. Yeah. The problem with that kind of thing is... If that standard wouldn't apply to me, it shouldn't apply to a law enforcement officer. If I shot a 67-year-old man at a red light with a cane in his hand, I'd be in prison for the rest of my life. But somehow, and this is, and, and to my law enforcement friends out there, I love you guys, you know I do, but an, a law enforcement officer's life is not worth more than mine. Mm-hmm. And, and officer and safety, also, aren't we paying them? Maybe we're not paying them enough. Maybe we're not training them well enough, but we're kind of paying them to take a little bit of risk. Well, they assume the risk when they put the uniform on. Not saying that that, that means that they should be killed, like in, in uh, Houston or Dallas, where it was. Um, they should be shot down the street. I mean, we also lost someone in New York, a police officer in New York. Well, we lo- we're losing a lot of them. Yeah, and, and, mm-hmm. and that's because the last administration had this war on law enforcement, which I don't agree with. But at the same time, I don't think that law enforcement's encounter with every individual needs to be based on that premise. And I remember when I was in high school, I was an ex- ex- explorer with the sheriff's office because I was going to go into law enforcement. Um, and I remember watching those old guys back then in the 80s when they would arrest somebody. It was always, ah, turn around, put your hands behind your back. Yeah. And they put cuffs on. Yeah. Watch your average arrest today. You know, a lot of times someone's on the ground with someone standing on their head where they're putting cuffs yeah. on. I, mean, I don't know if folks know this. Is this only in Florida? The Explorers is something. I know it's definitely here in Florida in schools. Uh, yes. Kids can, like, kind of get some experience shadowing. Yep, you can ride with them, and, and, and you learn them. a lot of stuff to, to lead you into a career. Yeah. And, um, I ended up not going that route. Um, but, I mean, cops have a hard, hard, hard job. They have no respect now. They have less respect now than they've ever had. Because of what the governments have done recently, mm-hmm. uh, hopefully we can reverse that trend. Yeah. You know, how, how come we're not getting together and talking? Is this like the Russia thing? Is this really a situation where we're beyond talking? There's nothing we're going to do to really be able to talk this. Have you ever? Well, well, go. You cannot have a conversation um, with anyone who will not at least validate your point of view. That that's your point of view. Okay, and here's my point of view. Um, watch any of the Antifa videos on YouTube, and you'll see people that just try to have a conversation with them, and these people will not engage them, or they'll just scream fascist in your face. You can't talk. They, those, they are not prepared to have civil discourse. See, the right is still trying a lot of time. You'll see guys at those protests say, look, let's, have a, let's, let's just talk, and they'll pepper spray them or spray the string in their face or whatever, hit them with a bike lock in the head. Um, the left does not want to have a conversation. They think they want a war. They, that's what they think they want, only because they don't realize what they're getting. Yeah. You know, and now the, the, the Marxist communist elements invaded that movement as well. You know, they're flying the hammer and sickle flags and, and whatnot. Um, I mean, I remember maybe it's like um, I came from an outside environment to America in the 80s. It wasn't this bad in the 80s. Um, you know, maybe people who've been here had a different perspective, but it's definitely gotten worse. Oh, uh, yeah, it's so definitely gotten worse. Yeah. It's definitely gotten worse. So do you think there's anything we can do about it? Is there a way through this, or do we... I mean, obviously, we all need to keep preparing. <laughs> and, let, you know, the only way that, that I see things could change is if, is if somebody came onto the scene that both sides could relate to and that could unite the people, kind of like Reagan did, you know. He united the people. He worked with Tip O'Neill, you know. He worked with the opposition, um, if someone like that came on the scene that could just change people, um, maybe we could. But 
if we keep going, you know, right now we're looking at the pendulum swing. Every four to eight years, the pendulum swings farther or farther to either side. Mm -hmm. You know, we got Obama, who was an extreme leftist. Now we've got Trump, Mm -hmm. you know. He's extreme right, or so he says. That's... I don't know that he really is. Yeah, I think that's what they say. I think they made Trump into something because I remember when Trump was a you know a, a Democrat. Leader. Yeah, he was a Democrat. I remember when he was a Democrat. <laughs> I remember seeing Oprah encouraging him to run and all this kind yeah. of stuff. And then I think one of the things that happens is that if we did have someone that was balanced, you know, that machinery out there, that political media machinery would just say, No, this guy's I, I'm I'm always amazed at how people think Trump is just some kind of raging racist and all that. This guy's been in the public eye for most of his adult life. Yeah. You know, and so and, and in New York City. So if this would had really existed, all of this stuff would have come up before, but now it's just magically there. Well he said some horrible you know. stuff in the past. There's no doubt about that. But everybody has. Yeah, we all t- I, I say it's crazy shit. Everybody said something yeah, that they regret. We all say crazy things, but But the know. the left is using him as the boogeyman. I mean when was the last time the media was calling for open revolt or the assassination of a president, you know, or or asking Russia to come help us because we've been taken over by a coup? Never. Never. The and last but time was but never. it's okay it was now, crazy, you know. Yeah. Before, when when um, Bush was president, they made a movie about killing killing Bush. No movies were made about killing Obama. Nobody was calling for his his death in the media or right. on no TV. No one was putting on plays. But now here we are again. The right wins, and we're back to that again. See, it's. Words have meaning and, and um, consequences when it's the, the, the left loves to say that. Words have meaning and consequences until it's their turn to say them. Then all that goes out the window. Right. So I, I think it's, yeah, sadly, I, just from what I see, the, you know, the media that I watch, um, which is various and vast sources from a number of places, um, I just don't see our way back. Yeah. I think everyone, you know, I know a lot of people are relaxing right now in the gun world and, and, and prepping and all of now that. Now is not the time to be relaxed. Now it's time and to even be stocking up. I feel myself doing that. And I think we need to be careful because that swinging thing, it reminds me of if you can take, you know, if you've got a piece of metal and you want to break it when I was a kid. I mean, obviously not like a real hard rod. But Working if you back kept and forth. just bending it like this, it's going to snap. And I feel like that's the direction we're heading in. Let's let's hit up some. What what questions do we have left here? Well, somebody said uh, they asked about what about preparing for every day, uh, like car breakdowns and power outages and stuff like that. Um, you're more likely to suffer a personal disaster than you are a global or national disaster. And I always tell people to, to if you can't survive a personal disaster, you're not going to survive one of these bigger events like the end of the world or whatever we want to call it. Um, and so definitely plan that way. Everybody should. I had a lady one time. That contacted me and, and she asked about learning about starting to prep. She's like, I don't have a lot of money. I don't have this and that. But what should I do? And I asked her. I said, um, I said, well, if you lost your job tomorrow, I said, could you pay your rent at the end of the month? And she said, no. I said, well, let's start there. Mm-hmm. Get up a cushion of savings. And she got mad and never spoke. She wouldn't reply to me after that. She got mad. Because that's not the answer she was looking for because it's not sexy. It's not cool. Yeah, what's the matter? I mean, that is, that is where you but start. That's where you start. Um, yeah. And all the food stuff that you were talking about, all these things just aren't for an apocalypse. No. Right? They're, they're also for those situations. You know, if you, if you lost your job and you have six months worth of food saved up and put back and you lose your job, you can step back and look at your situation and say, well, we're not going to starve for the next six months. Mm-hmm. We may not necessarily like everything we're eating every day, but we're not going to starve. We, we can, can now take, take the resources that we would have had to apply to food and apply to something else. Mm-hmm. You know, and that goes with everything. If you've got fuel stored, if, you, if you've got whatever, all of that can be used. It's for an emergency, whether it's your personal emergency or a global emergency or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It's for your emergency, whatever, yeah. however you find yourself. In yeah, that. don't think, don't be allowed to believe that you're wasting it. If, you're just, if, if what you're setting up is just for the apocalypse, you can have a personal apocalypse. And you're going to have personal emergencies. Yeah. You can count your, your, you know, your, your, your blessings on that. You're going to have them. Yeah. Um, somebody asked, and it's been here for a little bit, book nine. Um, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'll let you know. I can't tell you because I don't know. Yeah, we have to get through this. When does the audio come out? Because the audio book for the, the audio book for book eight. July 11th. Okay, so we're a few days away. It's on pre-order now. You can pre-order it at uh, audible.com, and it'll release July 11th. If you pre-order it, it'll just download right to you. Um, and, yeah, somebody made the comment that Reagan worked with a different group, mainly World War II vets, and you're right. He did work with a different segment of society that 
was selfless. And we don't have that now. Now it's the me generation. It's the me. And that's, that's why I say I don't think we can have a conversation because everybody's just me. And, <laughs> and, and to the, I, I, I joked with my, I was joking with my wife the other day about her losing her phone. And you look at these kids today, you know, there's now conditions, medical conditions for this right here. Mm-hmm. And we all have one. I've got one. I use mine too. Yeah. Um, but I was joking with my wife about making a spoof video about like walking up, you see somebody laying on the ground, they're unconscious, and you're like, oh no, where's their phone? Oh, I don't know. Give me your phone. And you take your phone, clear, and you go, and then it pops up. Like, oh, where's my phone? You know, they pop back up. Um, that's where that's what the society's wrapped around today. They're they're not interested in in their fellow man. The betterment of society, the betterment of their neighbor. Most people don't know their neighbors. Um, you know, a lot of people don't even do this thing that we're doing, even in our community. Sitting down, like, what, you're talking for two hours. Yeah. What's wrong so what? With you? I only had five minutes. Yeah. Well, what, what's the thing about YouTube videos? I made a YouTube video one time. I think it was like 17 minutes long, and somebody contacted me like, "Dude, that's way too long. Nobody's gonna watch a video that long." I'm like, I don't care. Bullshit. Yeah. I, I, if 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 you're if there's someone speaking something that I find useful, yeah, I'm gonna watch it as long as it takes to watch. They're like it people don't have the attention it. span for that kind of thing now, and I'm like, well, I'm not talking to those people then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think they don't have the attention span, and it is a problem. It is a problem that people don't want to take the time. But I think we need to do it because just talking about look, a lot of us are out here. A lot of people are feeling on their own nowadays. Oh yeah. With all this technology that we have, we're it's making people feel more and more isolated. alone. More yeah. isolated. More isolated. And and one of the reasons what people keep asking me why I'm doing this, I'm doing it so I can talk to everyone. I'm talking it out for me. I'm talking it out for you. For everyone out there, let's talk about this stuff and get it out there and then feel like maybe you'll come to realize when I'm, when just me and everyone else, when we stop editing everything, like, wow, this is a real human being. They, he thinks some of the things I do. Exactly. You know, and we'll get all that work. And, and people system. realize that their differences aren't as big as they thought they were. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, somebody here, go, they, they're asking kind of a round back question to what something we talked about earlier. How do we prep with a paycheck to paycheck lifestyle? What should we focus on? Um, I'm going to kind of answer that by, by telling you, someone asked me one time, what was the best money I ever spent? The best dollar I ever spent on prepping. And I was asked this in an interview, and my wife had me walk into the bedroom, and she heard it. And uh, she looked at me, and she's like, the first dollar you ever spent. And she was right. <laughs> the best dollar I ever spent on prepping was the first dollar I ever spent. If you have a limited budget, um, we all waste money somewhere. What's called our latte factor, some people talk about. Um, try to cut back on that and refocus that money even if you buy one can of just say beans that you put on the shelf and say, all right, I've started my preps with that right there. 89 cents. That's my start. And next week you buy a one pound bag of rice and you lay beside it, you know, and then next week you buy something else and you put it there, you know, you go to a yard sale and you find a good gas can. It's got a lid. looks great. And the next week you can fill that thing up with five gallons of gas and some stay bill and put it in the garage. Just, just start taking those steps. If you know, you can save water in two liter bottles. You know, if you don't drink soda, find some friend that does. Get them to give you the two liter bottles. Rinse them out. Wash them real good. Fill them up. Tap them. Stick them in the garage. Now you're storing water. Didn't yeah. cost you. I a mean, penny. do you have to? Do you have to spend money to prep? I think um, I would. I would well, say that you, you do. Know. You do. There's a lot of things you do need to. You, you, you have to acquire things because think yeah. about. But you can also barter and trade, right? You now can in barter this and world, trade. Absolutely. And, trade with and you can hit Craigslist. A lot of stuff's given away for free. Mm-hmm. Um, Hit Craigslist, look up that kind of thing. Um, but you know, you got to get food yeah. to put a food away. You, yeah. You've got to come up with it. Yeah. And if you have time, if you have time, I'm going to tell you, people have people have skills and they have time, but they don't want to work for other people because they feel like mm, I'm not working for that. You know, mm-hmm. that is a commodity. <laughs> oh yeah. The skills and having the time to do things, find something that you can do for people, and you can either trade that into money or some of these things that you need for prepping. Right. And and. It, like I said, it, even if it's only one or two things a, a week that you, you put back, those one or two things put you one or two things ahead of most other people because they're not even considering doing this. Like I live in Florida. You know, we're in Florida. I don't know how well you prepare for hurricanes. I prepare for them every year. I, well, obviously now I stay fairly well prepared for them. Um, but even before I was really dedicated to doing this, I had generators and stored fuel and water and food, and I had all that stuff. We just kept it for hurricane season. 
because we knew it was going to come. I wasn't one of those idiots that was running out to Home Depot two days before the storm <laughs> trying to buy a generator when you couldn't find one. Yeah. Um, and I also wasn't the idiot that when the storm passed by and my power didn't go out that I returned my generator. I kept it. Mm-hmm. I invested that money and I kept it uh, because I was going to need it again. You know, mm-hmm. it's Florida. We're going to need them. Yeah, the hurricanes has been a while. I mean, we had Matthew. Just hit your light bulb on Gentry. If you live in, well, if you live in a rural area like we do. Yeah. Right? You know, it just takes that dude who's flying down the street, uh, you know, drinking or whatever he's on, and bam. You, know? you, you hear the pole go out, and then you're like, oh. Or we're finally, we're finally back into the typical Florida summer pattern of these rage and thunderstorms every evening yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah. And my power has gone out twice just from that. Yeah. So... I mean, you know, just start where you can start. You know, everything doesn't have to be the most expensive, best, top of the line, whatever. Um, start with little stuff. Start with what's in your budget. You know, you need food. You need water. You need shelter. You need medical equipment. And by that, I mean bandages, gauze, that kind of stuff. And you need energy, batteries, fuel, that sort of stuff. Sit down and make those lists. Make those columns up on a list and fill in what they mean to you. You know, what energy means to you may not mean the same thing it does to me. You know, what medical means to you may not mean the same thing it means to me. So you figure out what they mean to you and then start working to fix those. Places like Save a Lot and all these are good places to go get cheap stuff to store. Were you always uh, a wealthy, super, <laughs> mega... Hell, I'm not dude. now, man. I mean, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, I'm just, I, mean, I, know, I know you saw what I did up at Big Daddy's a minute ago, but that doesn't happen every day around here. <laughs> I mean, I'm, just, uh, um, I'm, I'm just messing with you because yeah. I think like maybe people think, like, oh, it's easy for you to say you're a big author or whatever. I, first yeah. of all, that's not necessarily uh, true. But then also, it doesn't seem to me like you always, you know, you, were no. always weren't, a, you weren't always an author and you probably no. weren't always... The last know, job I had, and, and, it, and it, some people may think I'm trying to brag when I say this, but I'm really not, but the last job I had, I made like $60,000 a year. That's not an exorbitant amount of money. Um, I raised three girls and my wife, she didn't work. I had bills like everybody else did, and I still that's, managed to put stuff away. Yeah, that's definitely when you, you know, when that was the entire family income wasn't a big thing. It could be done, and we all need to do it. And, and even just thinking about it and starting to do it in small ways is a, is a good thing. So, any other questions there, Lola? Yeah, we got a long one coming wow, we got, wow, people are really enjoying this. Then. Awesome. I'm glad everybody yeah, popped in. Cool. How are you doing? Are you good on time? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine, man. Okay, cool. Um, so, let's, uh, so, we questions. got one here that says, can we talk about threat assessment and what is necessary? to prep for Hmm. Um, for For threat threat assessment assessment, we could talk all night long on threat assessment for for threat assessment to give you a much better idea than I can provide I'm going to point people back to something I mentioned earlier which is Ford Observer Um, my buddy at Ford Observer is doing a hell of a good job he was a former military analyst intelligence analyst and now he's doing the same thing in a civilian arena and no one's doing anything that comes even remotely close to what he's doing. Who are we, and who are we talking about? Ford Observer Magazine. You can Ford find Observer. it at readfomag, I think it is, dot com. At readfomag.com. Okay, cool. Um, cool. But, okay. but Google Ford Observer. You'll come up with him. He's a great guy doing really high-quality work. You can subscribe to him for a small fee, and he'll send you a, I think it's a weekly threat analysis nationwide. You can even get it boiled down into the state you live in and the region in the state you live in. Oh, cool. What actually is affecting you. Yeah, are these guys uh, big on the internet? or mm-hmm. Okay, cool. If, if you know, because you, you've got a lot of resources, yeah. so I'm sure you know all these guys. If they ever need any kind of exposure or anything like that. Well, that's just, someone that you should get on and talk one time. Yeah. Um, reach out to him. I can, I'll give you his phone number before we're done here. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I'd like to have him come on. He would be fantastic. Because he, he, he has a system for doing this. Okay. Um, I attended a class he did. It was fantastic um, of how to develop the network for your area, an intelligence network. Uh, and it's not always what people think. You know, He goes through the various kinds of intelligence, open source intelligence, human intelligence, what we call signals intelligence. Um, tells you how to, to recognize these and use them for what they're good for. Um, and, and that's where I'll tell people to go look for threat assessment. As for what we need to be preparing for, um, we would go right back to the basics again. It's the same thing. It's it's food, water, shelter, security, um, energy, and medical. Those are the things you need to keep yourself alive. What the what the threat is is kind of irrelevant. You have to maintain those things. And if you break it down into what are you going to need to do every single day? You're going to need to eat food. 
you're going to need to drink water. So right there, those two are number one. Actually, I put them backwards. Water's going to be number one because without water, a couple days, you're dead. Without food, you can go a few weeks, you're dead. Um, shelter, depending on where you're living, can be more important than water. If you're in a frigid environment or if you're in a scorching like desert environment, shelter can be the number one priority with water second than food. Um, if you're in a mild environment, obviously we're back to water again, and shelter can come later. Um, but security is also rolled into that depending on what it is. If it's a Katrina-style event where people are out in the street shooting one another, security is a big concern. Security may be number one immediately, you know, for at least the first, say, hours or maybe even days. But even if it runs into days, now water's back in the picture. So this is kind of an evolving, changing dynamic that you have to keep focused on what is your immediate need and what's going to kill you first. Yeah, you know, I, I, I and focus on. I'm not trying to get around the question, guys. It's hey, what, what was the question? Someone was trying to say, What do we, what what are we, we prep for? for? Yeah, what are we prep um, for? There's so many things that happen every day. I mean, I don't know where folks live out there, but I don't think there's anywhere that's immune. Um, Gainesville, um, six months ago or something like that, there was uh, something went through. I think it was a was it a hurricane, one of these Matthew. Sis- yeah, something went through here and knocked out electricity in Gainesville. Probably Matthew. Days. Yeah. yeah. So, all, I mean, I think it went for some people for over a week. Well, and some two. people didn't have it for two weeks. So. What we're prepping for here may be entirely different than what people out west yeah. are prepping for, or people in the northeast yeah. are prepping for. You're going to have to prep specific to your region, specific to your lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and your needs, you know. I, yeah, I have, and don't I, don't believe that crazy like thing where they watch they watch probably TV shows and they think all oh, these guys are prepping for an asteroid's going to hit the planet, aliens are going to come, zombie apocalypse. That's kind of like a joke, right? I mean, oh, it's a big time joke. Every, yeah. it, nobody, and I can speak to this for fat because Doomsday Preppers tried to get me to come on several times to the show and I wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, they just they wanted somebody to say something outlandish and ridiculous to make them look like moon bats, you know. Mm-hmm. If you're prepping, you're prepping to survive. Whatever it is, you know, it, it's not any one event because there's any number of things that we're prepping for. So you're just, you're prepping to survive. You want to keep your, yourself, your family, maybe even your community, whatever. You want to be a, an asset. And two, if it's a hurricane or a snowstorm, remember a few years ago up in Atlanta, they had that big snowstorm that came through. Traffic ground to a halt. They had to get the National Guard out, getting people out yeah, of their cars had, and like, stuff. Uh, roads were freezing over. Cars, people were stuck in their cars for days. Yeah. Um, you don't want to be that guy. That's what you're prepping for. Yeah. And and you're prepping so that if there is an event, you're not a further burden on the mechanism um, of rescue for yeah. those that aren't prepared. Yeah. That's one of the biggest reasons I prepare. Yeah. I don't want to be the guy that's standing in line, the FEMA line down here, if you recall the hurricanes, yeah. uh, for a we bag of ice and a gallon of water. I don't yeah. want to be that guy. Right. We were in West Palm Beach with two Category 5s hit directly. <laughs> Well, in 2014, when my youngest daughter was born, not 2014, 2004, excuse me, um, she was born the day before the hurricanes came through. My wife's in Waterman Hospital. She just had the baby. They're like, all right, you guys got to go. You got to go. Hurricane's coming. Get out of here. So I took my wife and new baby home, and I put her in our master bedroom where I already had a windy unit air conditioner set up, waiting to go. When the power went out, I shut off the non-essentials like central air and hot water heater, the big draws. Fired up my generators. My wife had an air-conditioned bedroom to be in. We had running water because we're on a well. We had running water. We had everything we needed. We ran the microwaves, the ceiling fans. We watched satellite TV. We had a kind of a hurricane party sort of in the house. My parents were there. My grandmother was there. My wife's aunt and uncle were at our house because mm-hmm. um, it was the best house at the time. Mm-hmm. And we just carried on as if nothing happened. Yeah. Power was out for a week. Power came back on for a day and a half. Next hurricane came through. Power was out for another week. Mm-hmm. We just picked up where we were it before. Happens, you know. uh, yeah, I mean, I know people live in places. And look, there's, there's lots of different scenarios. I'm not trying to scare anyone. You get in your car, you're driving home, it's late at night. Someone else's fault. You roll over somewhere. You're trapped in your car. It's nighttime. But where you roll into, a day comes and no one finds you. A couple of days. If you think that I'm making that up, that happens. Oh, it happens all the time. All the time. And it happens here in Florida where we're like, flat. Yeah. You know, but you can you can roll into some trees and they can just drive right past yep. you over and over again to some brush. So those kinds of things can happen. Um, if it, even if you're a two-income family, all of a sudden one of those incomes 
gone like yep. that. You know, company goes out of business. If you think that we're out of the dark times financially, we're headed, my personal opinion. Oh, we're headed into some seriously dark times. Yeah, we're headed back into those financial um, issues and all that kind of stuff. Just be prepared because it can, it can happen to anyone. And we're not, I'm not saying like be a super prepper or anything like that, but just be practical about yeah. what you do. Right? Well, I'm all for super preppers. I like super preppers. Um, yeah. Somebody over here asked, uh, how do we prep when traveling? Um, well, this is one of my favorite answers when I get asked questions of all varieties. Well, that depends. <laughs> Number one, how are you traveling? Are you flying? That's an entirely different kind of travel. Like when I traveled out to Wyoming recently, I drove my truck. In my truck, I had three long guns, about 6,000 rounds of ammunition, four handguns. I had my tent, my teepee actually, and a wood, or wood burning stove. I had cold weather clothes, warm weather clothes, food, water, spare fuel, all kinds Damn, of stuff. Damn, man, you're, you're really living this thing. You know, uh, it's it's what I do. Long. I yeah. mean, yeah. all the ammo I took because I was going to do a bunch of shooting when I was out yeah. there. Yeah. But still, I travel, I, I prepare according to how I'm going to travel. Now, if you're flying, obviously these things are much harder. Um, but there are things you can take on a plane with you that will help you survive. Alan Kay, I flew with him one time. He had a bag that he carried a metal cup, a metal water bottle, a shelter half, um, paracord, water filter. That's basic life right there. In, in primitive survival, everybody's always asked, what's the one thing you take? Like if you're stranded on a desert island or this or that, what's the one item? You'll hear knives and machetes and whatnot. Da, 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 da. You can come up with cutting implements. You can make them usually through some way. Um, or there's ways around even having a cutting implement. The hardest thing in nature to improvise Hands down, the hardest thing is a metal container, mm-hmm. be it a water bottle or a metal cup or a metal okay. pot. Never thought about that. The hardest thing about it, if you don't have a metal pot or a metal container, yeah, how, how, are you you gonna boil, how are you going to boil? How you going to boil water? Yeah, that's true. There's ways to do it, but all of them require gathering extremely difficult resources to get a hold of. So, for the average person, I'm always like, a metal container needs to be in your kit. Absolutely. Cordage is also very difficult to make. Actually, it's not that difficult to make if you know how, but for the average person, it can be so cordage. And then a shelter, like a poncho, um, a tarp, you know, that kind of thing. That's a very basic kit. Then a water filter. Um, if you've got a water filter and a metal cup, now you have two methods of purifying water should something happen to one of them. Two is one, one is none kind of a deal. Mm-hmm. So right there is just a basic kit that you could carry. That's TSA approved. You can carry that right on the plane. No problem. No one's yeah. even going to question it. Right. That makes sense. I think that was a good question. The the, the questions sound like they're flowing. They keep coming, right? Oh, co- Somebody asked, what is cordage? Cordage is cord. Cordage. Like paracord. Like, like string, rope, um, yeah. stuff to tie things with. Yeah. Um, so you can make that through natural means. There's a number of really high-quality natural materials out there to do it with. There's also some poor-quality ones. Um, but cordage takes time. A 100-foot hank of paracord will save you days of effort. Mm-hmm. So, especially if you break that all the way down, pulling the innards out, I mean, you can get miles a cordage out of 100, the 100-foot uh, hank. Um, so, I highly recommend cordage, metal container, a tarp, and a water filter. I mean, that's a basic kit that anybody can carry. Um, so, someone said, I had enough in my vehicle to give a liberal heart attack you have no idea if they would that's have the point i'm always nervous when i travel while getting pulled over because i'll be on the side of the road for hours explaining my way out of that right yeah trying so. to uh, explain why do i have all of this yeah i actually drove to uh i drove out to arizona and then uh las vegas one time with a 50 <laughs> and a bunch of 50 bmg in my trunk and i didn't realize there was a border crossing Ah. Yeah, so, because I, and I first thought, wait a second, did I, am I in Mexico yeah. somehow? Did, did this navigation do me wrong? But no, it was like, I think it was on, in like, New Mexico or something, and you have to. The border patrols up yeah, in the, and in the they state. don't warn you. Pull, yeah, no, they don't yeah. warn you. Pull and all people of a sudden, over. I'm like, pull over. I was like, uh oh, there's a, there's a massive 50 in the truck and a lot of ammo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, but, you know, they just said, American. Like, yeah, let me yeah, I pulled I, I pulled off the interstate one time going up through the D.C. area. I thought I was in Virginia, and the sign ahead said Washington D.C. five miles. And I like <laughs> slammed on the brakes and slid off the road trying to figure out how do I get turned around because I cannot drive this into D.C. Yeah, it's so you know what you, it's easy to get lost in D.C. and wind up like in uh, West Virginia, which that's not bad. I, so, that's happened to me several. Yeah, times. someone says what do you do at these stops with so much ammo. Um, 
Well, it's not illegal to have it. Pure yeah. fact, it's not illegal to have it. Now, I wouldn't recommend getting pulled over that much ammo in, say, Illinois or New York State or somewhere like that. But in the places that I'll travel, um, it's generally not an issue. Texas, Wyoming, Kansas, Arizona, Georgia, South Carolina, they don't bat an eye at it. Um, a lot of times the cops are more interested in what kind of gut firearms you're carrying um, than they are the fact that you have them. Yeah, yeah. a lot of those good states, that's what's going to happen. But, yeah, but there are some. You know, like I wouldn't drive my truck into California for no amount of money. Yeah. Even if I think I took all the guns out, I still wouldn't do it because there's probably one in there somewhere I forgot about. So I, I wouldn't do that. So it, it, you can vote with your feet, you know. You can vote with your feet on a lot of things. And I will not go into the to a state that I severely disagree with, like New York, Illinois, um, Connecticut, Maryland, California, Oregon, Washington. I'll avoid those states as my way to protest their draconian laws because they're not going to get a cent of my money. Yeah, I agree with you. And I, bail I, I, or, <laughs> or yeah. gas taxes or whatever. Right. I try to do that as much as possible. Uh, I know Lola is trying to get me to go back to New York because she wants to see the winter time in New York. Talk her out of that, Chris. Tell her why that's crazy. I can't because my wife's doing the same thing to me. <laughs> Can we just let's send them together? Like, yeah, maybe, okay. ooh, maybe we should send them together. Uh, somebody asked, is there a uh, going to be a Charlie's Requiem 2? And yes, there is. We're working on it now. What is that for those of us that don't Charlie's know? Requiem is, well, there's Charlie's Requiem, Charlie's Requiem Demicide, oh, the other right, two books. Okay. Yeah, and the third one is, is coming. It's it's in the works. So, yeah, I should say we're working on three books, not two. So. Okay, cool. Let me ask you a fun question while yeah, Lola's writing that thing. So we're talking about, like, all this prepper stuff. What kind of stuff can you, what, what pleasures can you not live without, like, you know, what are the guilty oh. pleasures you got, you got to have? My number obviously, one. Obviously, we know you're doing the. Well, this has got to go to the wayside soon. I'm getting ready to. You know you're doing the, uh, the chewing. I'm getting ready to go do a cold effect. laser thing that will help me kick that habit, actually. Because okay. I need to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Um, my number one thing, and yes, I have actively prepped for it. What I consider guilty pleasure or the one thing that, even if the world's coming to an end, I really, really, really want to have is a hot shower. Okay. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, yeah, you can get funky and be nasty and feel grimy, but, man, if you can take a hot shower, you'll feel so much better. So how do you prep for that? I've got a portable hot water heater and propane tanks. Okay. I've got – I've actually got a whole shower system that I've built um, that I can run from a 55-gallon drum or even a – like a 15-gallon drum I have down that small as well. Um, I can drop a hose in the, t- in the tank. It's an on-demand pump. The hot water heater uses two D cell batteries to fire. So when I turn the water on, the pump will kick on. It'll start pumping water. The water heater will sense flow. It'll kick on. I got instant hot water. I can take a shower. Okay, yeah. So my... you're serious about that yeah. hot shower? Yeah, I'm serious about the hot so shower. So are there any other things like are you into video games? Is there like yeah. kind of food that you have to have? You know. To well, I play that. well for food. It's um, that's a relative thing. You know, you're gonna want the highest quality stuff you can get, and, and we we try to stock some of the guilty pleasure stuff. You know, one thing I think people are forget about is um, if you're in a crisis situation. Being able to kind of escape that situation, even for an hour or two at a time, is a great thing. And yeah, if you have kids, vacation. and if you have kids, it's really yeah. important. Yeah. So one of the things that we do is we hit like the uh, whenever we go to Walmart, we'll hit the five dollar movie bin and the ten dollar movie bins at Walmart, and pick through there and pick out movies and add to our collection of movies. Because um, if you are in a situation in the world, call it what you want. Um, be able to throw a movie into a DVD player and sit down and watch a movie and escape your current reality for a little while is really good. And it's and the goofier, movie, so, yeah. the goofier kind of the movie, like The Goonies. You know, imagine yeah. the world's falling down around us. People are killing each other in the streets. But you know what? For the next 95 minutes or whatever it is, I'm going to go watch Chunk yeah. of the Truffle Shuffle. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? suspend your disbelief, yeah. go into this world, relax a little bit, changes the whole thing. That's... That is a good point. Do you play video games? What kind of what kind yeah, of? Yeah, I'm a I'm a to? Battlefield fan. I like Battlefield and Xbox One. That's what I play. Battlefield One's my current thing. So, okay, I enjoy video games. Okay, yeah, you know it's cheap. I, that's what I tell my wife all the time. She's like, "Why are you doing that?" I'm like, "Cause it ain't costing me no money. Go away, leave me alone." <laughs> <laughs> and um, she believes that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody says, "What do you think about Tactical Bob? Do you advise against Molly and military style backpacks?" Um. Well, that depends. <laughs> if you're in if you're in downtown Manhattan and you're going to be with everybody else on the Soul Train out of town when the trains quit running, 
I highly advise against it. Um, it's a double-edged sword. You could look threatening to those you don't mean to look threatening to. Um, you could also look like a target to those that you don't want to look like a target to. Mm-hmm. You could be mistaken for f- government troops, and that could be a bad thing or a good thing. So it's kind of kind of relative. Um, it's weird, and I've spoken to some guys, some of the guys I was talking to you about earlier, that, um, and I think this is maybe why someone asked this. I've spoken to some military or former military guys that are like, yeah, we're going to start killing all the guys who are going around with that stuff first and you know yeah so you kind of you know you kind of want to blend in a little bit well and and those guys that say that are going to be getting killed by some of those guys so it's all a relative thing um i think for for me in the way that, that i'm doing things is i have a backpack that i keep in my truck that's um multicam but my clothes that i have to go with it are not so you know they're a you know, a beige pair of pants and maybe a green shirt or vice versa, whatever. Um, the benefit to the military stuff is its durability. You know, the, the lightweight, high-speed backpacker stuff, to, in, in my experience, doesn't stand up. I can destroy that stuff in a weekend. Um, the military stuff takes me a little longer to tear it up. You know, I still tear it up, but it takes me a little longer. Um, and it depends on the environment you're operating in. Some places you're not going to want to stand out, you know. And in other places, it's just not going to matter. And in other places, you might blend in like that. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, Texas, you're going to blend right in, probably. Yeah. Um, and then if you're actually in a, in the environment of the camo or whatever, that also helps. Well, it, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're going to be moving through a very hostile area and you make the conscious decision, all right, I can only move at night, and that means I'm going to have to hide during the day, then camo might be what you need. Mm-hmm. Um, that's an active part of some of what I do. I carry very high quality night vision with me and my intent is if I'm in a dangerous area is to move only at night mm-hmm. and I'll lay up during the day. Yeah. So camo is important then. Yeah. You know. Now just to, just to go back to it, uh, Walter, my friend Walter from Safety Harbor, I'm going to introduce you to him. He's a good dude. Yeah. Safety um, Harbor near Tampa? Or? Yeah, Safety yeah, Harbor. Okay. He's, uh, Walter owns Safety Harbor Firearms. All right. They, they sponsor the channel. Walter's a really good guy. He's into guns, uh, you know, like the old military vehicles yeah. and stuff like that. You know, I think you guys are together. I like the pork store over there in Safety Harbor, the Italian. Oh, the pork store? Yeah. <laughs> yeah Walter, he, he knows about the pork store. Yeah, man. Yeah, so maybe I'll bring you to Safety Harbor. We'll go Yeah, we can go over there. Him. And Walter says chocolate's like gold. <laughs> yeah. So Anything, any like uh, one of the things we stock to is, is cases of Coca-Cola, cans. Hmm. Uh, because, again, it's, it's a, a moment, moment of escapism that... You can't get these now, but I got one. And I'm going to sit down right here, and I'm going to forget about that crap for a minute. I'm going to drink a Coke. Yeah, it's not healthy for you. It's bad for you. I get that. But it ain't going to matter then. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, chocolate, worth yeah. gold. Anything that, that you can't get, a, a good quality cigar, you know, mm-hmm. something to escape yeah, and from. And high food. sugar under those circumstances is not as bad as it is right now. It's bad when no. we're sedentary. We just sit down. We don't do anything. I mean, then I see someone was asking about MREs and the heat. Yeah, they asked about keeping them in the car, yeah. yeah. So what do you think about that? Well, I don't keep MREs in my car in Florida because it's just too damn hot. Um, You know, when I got in my truck to come here today, I left my house around 2-ish. The thermometer on the truck said 100 degrees. It was probably 120 inside my truck. Um, MREs, they would probably be fine as long as the package isn't damaged, but they're going to be losing nutritional value real fast. Um, and eventually they are going to swell up. You'll open that thing up and that bag will be tight like a balloon. And that's when you need to be afraid. Handle like a landmine, you know, move very slowly, lay it down, walk away from it. Um, so I, I avoid it. I go with freeze-dried stuff because it's not an issue. Even if you can't boil water, all you can do is pour water into the pouch, seal it, carry it around for a couple hours. It'll rehydrate and get it cold. Okay, cool. Any other questions there? I think we probably should wrap this up so we can get we can get Chris back. Any other ones? Ready? Wow, we've been, been going, man. Yeah, we, we, we yeah. Let's let's uh, unless there's a, unless there's a question there. Yeah, Lola's you know, like, like, yeah, you're done. You yeah, yeah, Lola, Lola <laughs> Listen, here's the thing. Uh, Chris and I, we're friends. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. We're gonna do this again. He's a really good guy. If yeah. you guys have more questions and things like that, you know, we'll 
We'll bring him back. I'll do stuff. Um, you know, I'll love to see you come shooting with me. Oh, yeah, I'd love to come do that. That'd be yeah. fun, man. I'll do some stuff with you. We'll talk guns. We'll build. We'll do some pro. We'll do a bunch of stuff. <laughs> more books. More. Yeah, yeah, people want more books. There will be um, more. There's, a, there's like, I saw there was about 100 comments here that someone said you should write about this black YouTuber guy that has a mohawk. You know, but he's all, <laughs> he's all awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Spin just, that around. Let's see yeah, everybody. Get yeah, right about me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm totally down with that. I'm totally cool with that. Yeah. So, um, any Chris, before we go, is there anything you know you want to like remind people or tell people how to get in touch with you? Uh, well, you can always find me on Facebook at Angry American, on Twitter the Angry American, on Instagram at angry american um you know book nine is is coming we're working on it we're also working on like i said the next one for charles requiem working on the new one it's called western resolve which is a spinoff um and we're working on the tv series for this it's getting a lot of traction now and um we're actually making progress now hopefully we'll have some big news here for that very soon the the first five books so everybody gets this right this is always a question can be found pretty much anywhere. Um, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, Books A Million, Hudson News, all those places. Amazon, of course. The subsequent ones after five, you can get it Amazon always and sometimes on Barnes & Noble. Online, not in the store. As a self-published author now, with the second half of the series, I don't have that big publisher behind me, so I can't get in the stores. I'm working to change that, but I haven't been able to do it yet. So Amazon is always the best bet to get them. I'm a big Amazon Prime fan. Um, I love our modern world. I like that one-click buy option, and stuff comes right to my front door. It saves me time, money. It saves me having to run around. My time is valuable, so I live out in the boonies and having to run to town to get something isn't always practical for me. So yeah, make sure you show the book. Make sure you show the book. Oh again. yeah, book eight. So yeah, book eight. It's Just out the, there. The latest in the series, and there it is. Yeah. Are so. you doing any personal appearances anywhere? Uh, I will be at Prepper Camp, probably in Saluda, South Carolina, in September. I will be at the National Self-Reliance Expo in Denver um, in September. And I will be in Rexville, I, not Rexville, Rexburg, I think it is, Idaho, uh, November 1st for the grand opening of a prepper superstore up there. So that's what I got scheduled right now. Okay, cool. All right. So, um, you know, I, I want to thank everyone for joining in here and uh hanging out with us for all this time asking yeah absolutely questions. this has been going man i didn't realize yeah. it go so long yeah i mean it's it's been fun so you know definitely get out there and support chris angry american he's a good guy he deserves your support get the book thank you if you've never heard of this get into the series i think you if you're a gun guy you'll really enjoy this if you're a prepper or yeah like, there's lots of good stuff well written or if you're just like a good story yeah, they tell I mean, me it's pretty good but i you know that's what they tell me so you know, uh, yeah, you know, um, that's what they say, huh, Chris? That's they what they tell me. Good. They so they tell good. me. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. It is, it is good stuff. I've been reading it. So, I, you know, I'm going to wrap up here. Thank everyone for all the good questions. and Yeah, uh, I appreciate everybody else. coming by. I mean, how was attendance? How did it look? Was it good? Yeah, it looks good. good. I mean, I can't see everything here, but I can see a whole bunch of questions going by and all that. So that's been great. I'm going to thank everyone that sponsors me, Rand CLP. Andrew's Custom Leather, Safety Harbor Firearms, uh, of course, Big Daddy Guns. That's where we're here. We're, we're doing the thing. Chris Who I helped sponsor today. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, um, uh, you know what? Here's the thing. Chris, right? You're going to, um, you're, you got like two twin Glock 17s, right? So those are, are you going to throw those up on social media somewhere? Yeah, right? the, I'll know, get those put together those tomorrow. They're a little MOS. Those are Big Daddy Guns specials. What's Lola that's, telling us? They're, they're saying don't end it. Um, yeah. We'll come do this again, though, yeah. and I'm going to start doing some Facebook Live stuff, too. I need to do this stuff a little bit myself, yeah. but I'm definitely come hang with Hank again. We'll do this some more. And for anybody who had a question that I we didn't get the answer tonight and you got something that you want to you want to pitch at me, um, I don't always know the right answer for you, but we'll definitely, because my right answer isn't necessarily your right answer, but we'll definitely try to muddle through it together to find your answer. Hit me up on Facebook. Send me a message, uh, post on my page, whatever. I reply to everyone who, who contacts me. I reply personally. So send me a PM on Facebook, post on my page. You will get a reply from me, always. Awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. So, you know, um, I'm going to try to do the best that I can do to help Chris out with that, too, so he gets more, more no exposure. Yeah, some more social media stuff going and all of that. I'm trying to break that 10,000 like thing right now. I've yeah. got, like, 
That's like 9,800, I think, and change. Okay, okay, so we got to definitely, this is on the Facebook page, yeah, right? Yeah, on the Facebook page. Okay, so we got to break, we got to break grand. over like yeah, 10,000. Can we, maybe we can do something for like when it goes over 10,000? Yeah, I was going to try to find something to uh, do, because I like to give stuff away too. That's yeah. another thing. You follow my Facebook page, I do giveaways every now and then of really cool stuff. Yeah. So keep an eye on that. come up with something, so for the 10,000th and one like or something like that, or if you know what, when you hit 10,000, We'll pick someone out of that 10,000 and give them something really cool from Angry American, from Hank Strange. We'll throw some cool, awesome. we'll throw some cool stuff in there. All right, so, and then, uh, you know, finally, I want to thank the people who support us on Patreon. We're on Patreon slash Hank Strange, so if, uh, if you're considering that, go out there and help us out. We really appreciate it. All right, guys, next time. Hit the button. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we're out of here. I've got to do my own work. I bleed my own blood. <laughs> I bleed my own blood. Peace out.